Wednesday night. And you know what that means? It's Turfway time. And uh, really excited. I got a special guest with me, Kevin Strom, a good friend and a great handicapper, runner up in the BCBC. That was that was a hell of a weekend and, and, and a hell of an exciting day. He did an awesome job. And uh, you love Turfway. I love Turfway. And uh, looking forward to this, just playing some Turfway together. Yeah. No way. I'd rather spend a winter Wednesday up here from upstate New York than at Florence, Kentucky. I know it's probably just as cold there, uh, but we got some racing. I love night racing. I think everybody does. Um, pools have been really good this year, so it's nice to be able to fire at those, but not too good, so we kind of keep the computers away. It's kind of that sweet spot right now with that yeah. tier, so hopefully it continues to be like that. The early seems like an opportunity, um, so yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, some uh, some good races, and uh, I mean, you know, Turfway never disappoints from a field size perspective. We always got some uh, good races to fire at, and uh, yeah, tonight's some different. So, all right, so look, I'll, I'll throw up your picks here for the early, and okay. let you talk through a couple of them, and uh, let's see if we can show that. All right, there we go. So, uh, did I get this right? Yeah, so 157 in the first. Yeah, so I know it's a little thick there. And it is, uh, but that's the beauty of Turfway, right? So, a little wide. Yeah, so that's that's kind of how you have to play this. Um, and, you know, we're kind of spoiled in the early here. There's no real one to five or two to five favorite uh, that people are going to be keying off of. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to catch some prices. Um, and you'll see right there, the left column is my A's and the right column is my B's, meaning that when I play pick fives and pick fours, I allow myself two B's, right? So if all three of the right column for races three, four, and five win, uh, I'm out to dry because I don't get uh, three Bs in my pick five. So what needs to happen is I need to be right with my A's two out of three times in races three, four, and five. Um, so I prove myself to be a little wider there because I'm playing against all of the favorites that we're going to have. You know, you'll notice that race two, I don't have the Wesley Ward in there. I know it's five to one in the morning line, but that horse will take money. <clears throat> it's going to go off as the favorite. So I like to beat those kind of right, those those kind of horses. Uh, Wesley Ward is not my favorite trainer, um, so I'm not going to use him anyway. I wish Walt luck. That looks like a pretty slow Wesley Ward, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, Ward is uh, pretty bad on owner trainer horses he debuts in maiden claimers. Um, but that's race yeah. two. We'll go over race one. Um, I like a little bit of pace in this race. You know, the way I've been playing this and the way I'm going to cap it for today is last week it was forward in the sprints and fair in the routes. Uh, there was no significant winter precipitation that happened. So I'm going to keep playing it that way. So tonight we're playing forward in the sprints and fair in the routes. So race one is, it's a route, you know, low level claimer. What we yep. get here at Turfway, Turfway special. So I think we get a little bit of speed here. You know, the three is obviously going to be forward. Fair and Peterson, she loves to go. That's all she does is, is sit forward. So I think she's going to be a little quick. I think uh, Gerardo might sit off a little bit instead of going straight to the front. So that right there. Kind of sets it up a little bit. Uh, Jane on the six. Jane loves to be forward as well. Mm -hmm. Tries to get a little little position there. So we might get a little three wide duel here uh, for the early going. I think it's going to take a little bit too much out of the three for the three okay. to hang on. Um, so I like a little bit of off pace here. Not necessarily deep closing because the deep closers, the ones that loop around the field and get there in the stretch and and roll by, they don't. They haven't been getting there lately. So right. we're going to try a little little more mid pack. Um, and if we can get the horses that can kind of tuck in and save ground along the rail because that move's been working. You save the ground. You know, it yeah. works everywhere, but noticeably in Turfway. Um, it's it's really worked the last three or four weeks, more so than the first couple weeks. Yeah, like in night one, it was those looping closers. But since then, I don't know if they scraped the rail. I don't know if they, if they took some material off or whatnot. But that rail in the stretch has been carrying those horses forward, whether you're on the lead, whether you try to close up the rail. Um, so you need a combination of saving ground, you need a jockey that's not afraid to go up the rail, and uh, you need a horse that's good enough and has good enough late pace to run down those the speed that hasn't been coming back to the field. So for that reason, I like the one, Walt, he's proven multiple times that he's he's able to close up the rail. <clears throat> so I enjoy his run style. That horse should be uh, should be mid-pack at worst. He, he shouldn't be sitting in last. Um, those Laurel races were kind of outliers. I don't like them too much. Um, if you go back a little bit, it has consistent late pace. It seems to fire every time before that. So I'm not the, sure. The seven horse. The, horse the one, yeah. I'm not sure if it didn't one. like, if it yeah. didn't like uh, Laurel. Um, it's a little bit of clash relief here. I always love to see the class droppers. Price is nice. Uh, I like to see. I would like to see it float up a little bit, but 
you know, Walt's a fan favorite here at Turfway. He's a big bug boy last year here. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't think we're going to get too much. I think five to one is probably going to be post time what you're going to get on him, but we'll take five to one. Um, oh. And then unfortunately I'm also using John McKee. John McKee's a bit of a clown jockey for me. He gives pretty bad trips. Um, who knows where he's going to sit. He's going to be 10 wide on the turn. He's going to be on the rail, probably gives three checks. You know, he's probably out the back, but I do, uh, I do like the horse itself. If he can give some of an appropriate ride, it's given races in the past on turf uh, with those big fields that can win this race. You know, it closes, he fires, good late pace numbers. Um, hasn't that's, run too well in the synth here. That's, that's the five you're talking about, right? Yeah, the five, yeah. Yeah. So has not run too well in the synth. Uh, it's not by any means any kind of single A. But if you're looking for a spicy price, you know, John McKee's 9-1 to one right now. I don't know what he goes off at, but yeah, it's not going to be too short. I think you'd be a little spicy closer there, but you're probably going to get the classic John McKee. He tips ten wide in the stretch, looks pretty good and flat. It's pretty hard. Um, yeah, so. we'll we'll pull up the stats. Uh, okay, here you go. One for twenty on a route at Turfway so far. Mm, yeah, it's a quality jockey right there. <laughs> One for thirteen uh, sprinting. So uh, yeah, Turfway is so tough to ride that I, I think you've got you, you're right. You got to spend pay attention to which jocks uh, know. You know, know how to ride the, the the meat, right? Yeah, and I I liked it because he gave the ride three back, and I think that ride wins that here. He just needs to be able to save some ground on the five. He he doesn't need to sit three wide. I want him to attack and uh, no further back than that. But again, another horse gets nice little class relief here, a little class drop. <clears throat> yeah, that would be and a then, big price to get. I mean, you could get if you could start off with a one here at uh, nine to one. That would be a huge price. Yeah, it'd be great. And then uh, you know nothing nothing spicy with the seven. It's the favorite right now. Might end up going off his favorite or co-favorite with the three. Right. Um, another class dropper. I like the horses that, you know, have these, you know, kind of flat run styles. There's no increase or no down increase. Um, right. Or decrease. But there's a significant class drop for them. Right. So this is this is half the level of claiming for this horse. So right. I enjoy that. You know, obviously the public sees that too. It's two to one. Um, time form fake. Nothing really sticks out. It's not a phenomenal horse by any means. But I thought that, you know, it would be a lame horse to lose the pick five, too. It's not like one to five favor or anything like that. So it might just be a, a case of survival and we use the seven to get along with it. But spicy one and five. Uh, that's why I have them both uh, in there with the seven, because I'd like to catch the price instead of, you know, okay. single in the seven. I was, I was leaning towards the three as the best speed, but uh, I think you sold me on the one. So I think I'm going to add the one to the three and just stick yeah, with just, the one three. I just think Walt can close up the rail. We know he's yeah. done it before. He said, the only problem is that he likes to do the drop back to last and then fire late. Yeah, that's that works on his track. So he needs to be a little more cognizant of the pace. I know he's lost his bug status, so he needs to be a little bit more aware and maybe yeah. sit mid pack and not as far back. So let's talk about race two, uh, main claimer. It's a pretty tough maiden race, and uh, there's a lot of things going on there. You you were on three, four, and eight, and uh, anything in particular stand out there for you? Yeah, so I, I really. I have a tough time betting the first time starters in, in maiden claiming races. You know, this is a three-year-old race. Essentially, these are two-year-olds, right? So yeah. the only thing that makes them a three-year-old is we're three days into the new year. Yeah. Other than that, they're just glorified late season two-year-olds. Um, the trainers maybe wanted to wait to get a run in Lasix on them for their first time out. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that means, uh, you know, confidence-wise out of a trainer waiting this long to run a two-year-old, uh, only to debut in the maiden claiming ranks. But it, they can't be that high on the horse. So yeah. I look to the three here. I think the three is a is a really big, really big play for me. Uh, ran up against Buchu last time, the Phil Bauer uh, monster. That Philly ran in uh, one of the Breeders' Cup races. Right. Didn't run too well, but for the domestic races, she ran and came back around at Keelan. She ran really strong. Uh, it's also, you know, this horse doesn't want that long of a distance. So the cut back here, if you look at the race two back, that was Park Turf Sprint. You know, that turf is pretty forward out there ever since, you know, the whole CD fiasco. They ran the races over at Ellis. Uh, it was all forward. So to see a horse like this, you know, he got shoveled back in the turn a little bit, yeah. but then came back again on that on that forward turf, and they weren't they weren't flying. They were going pretty pretty moderate, pretty slow. The fractions weren't red or anything like that. Um, I like the effort. So they gave him a little bit of time off. Uh, started working. I like the work tab. Came back. You know, the trainers uh, one for three so far. You get Ramos, who's kind of lost his powers a little bit since Indy. But, you know, he, you know, he's capable of giving a good ride. 
And there's the uh, the Sire move. You're talking about high fashion Kate. Uh, yeah. So this, not very familiar with this Demarchelet or however you say this, but 15% uh, turf routes, not in a small sample, but 25% uh, winners in a synthetic sprint. So at least uh, those numbers look pretty good. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's coming from something that it can do to something that, you know, early on it's, it's much more capable of doing. Um, so, you know, by no means is this horse going to be one to five or even money. Right. So it is morning line favorite. And with, uh, with the scratch of the seven, the ward came out, uh, which is interesting is that Wesley leaves another one of his runners in. Right. And normally people will think, Oh, the trainer has two. He scratched one because he thinks the other one's live. I'm not sold in this 11. It's a slow ass horse. Looks like a really bad quality Wesley Ward horse. Uh, Ward was yeah. pretty happy this year. A uh, bit of a rat trainer. I don't enjoy him very much. Um, <laughs> his horses always take money. Not my. Well, kind. you just don't like that he's slamming chalk down in the better's faces, right? That's really what you don't like. Or, yeah, no, he's, he's well, I mean, it's more than that, money. but right. We just got the Twilight Gleaming Scalp at Gulfstream this last weekend, which was nice. Um, this horse, you know, it's not going to be sure, I don't think. But the owner trainer Wesley Ward, yeah, is going to be. Uh, he's going to take money. We all know that he's probably going to end up two to one. That's probably going to be the price. Um, so. Yeah. What's our uh, our AI line on that? Is actually what the AI didn't pick up on. It still has like six to one. So I don't know. But I, I agree. It's going to be. It, it's going to. The public is a sucker for Wesley. You know, they see the statistics. Oh, 25%, 30% first time Lasix, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. it's, I think it's a good opportunity to play against this horse right here. You know, people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to use it. I'm going to include it five to one. It's not going to be five to one. It's going to be laced in the horizontals. We all know this. So I like to play against these. Um, three is going to be most of my weighting. And by that, I mean most of my money is going to be through the number three. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like, you know, two of the firsters here. It's tough to get away from using a first timer at a price because it's so alluring it like tempts you in it's like a siren to the pirates and the the sailors all the time it's like hey 12 to right. 1 we're gonna play really long use me they always run out the friggin' back right yeah, i'm a sucker and i'm gonna use the mickerweez uh because that guy's been pointing really well he's kind of like a d whitworth backman type yeah um, 40 percent here so far another rat jockey able to do you up not great but uh He's, his age, credit to his agent, he's been getting live mounts. So we'll see if he can get the job done with this four. And then, uh, Sadio's so winning nine percent, four percent sprinting, and only, uh, oh, and 11 percent. No, no, he's winning no 11 percent across the board. All I know is he's winning when I don't need him. There so that's irritating. Uh, and then we're gonna use the uh, Indian ink, the eight, you know, Tom Drury. 0 for 25 maiden claiming. Disgusting. Edgar Morales won the first race of the meet, has not won again. Disgusting. But again, 10 to 1. These first first play really long in the sequences. Yeah. I get tempted in. He's got nice works. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a sucker. I'm going to use the four and the eight as first timers. Okay. And the thing about the eight we were talking about beforehand. Uh the horse worked at Ocala very fast, was uh worked in nine and four for a furlong. Uh, those that's a good sign, but uh, but that doesn't really fit with maiden claiming. So and it doesn't fit with Tom Drury's over twenty five uh, with maiden claimers first time out. So uh, some, but it, but it is you know there are some reasons there are some good works on this horse. So yeah, when I see that, typically the handicapper and me goes, oh, they really want this horse to get claimed and they want it out of their barn. They're working yeah. really hard. So unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch this work. So if it's one of those where the, the rider is, you know, full out and asking and the horse is running really hard, then that's probably the case because. Yeah. I, 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 there wasn't it. Yeah, I didn't go. I didn't watch it. I just assume I assume that the Ocala sales, you know, they're selling. So they're working everything fast as much as, I mean, I, I, you know, they're probably they're blazing it as much as they can with every horse. Right. Because they want top dollar. Or that's what the rider. I assume that's what the riders are instructed to do. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then why don't we jump to race five for a second? Uh, sure. That was a tough maiden race, you know, one of the tough ones on the sequence. And uh, what were your thoughts on uh, race five? So race five, you know, G, Gerardo on the five. It's my boy right there. I think he, he made a pack with the devil to trade his powers in to win that Breeders' Cup race on no balls and to win right. that, the G2 on Derby Day with no balls. Had a great year. Um, 
So I don't know what's going on with him. He's in a bit of a funk. So right now it's kind of an opportunity to play against him when he's on a favorite. He hasn't been given quality rides. Mm-hmm. Um, so that five, I think, is going to go off favor. You're probably getting eight to five on it. So it's not terrible. You know, you could take it. These big fields yeah. allow for like a more flat favored horse like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I prefer the nine and 11. The nine had a really, really nice run out here last time. Um, the Terraza guy, he's he's a serviceable forward end guy. Uh, he just got out close. You know, it's not his fault. Um, just That's just how the race went. I love second time synth. That's one of my favorite angles. This horse coming up second time synth. I think it has Mojica up. Um, I love everything about this nine. And then the 11, a yeah. little bit of a downline closer. Uh, I don't love that. But uh, you get Machado, um, leading rider, you got to use him. So I was – most of my money in my plate are going to be through the 9 and 11 in, uh, in race five there. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, the 9 and 11 looked really good, and, and you know, they're going to – I think the five is going to get bet really hard. So I think there's going to be some opportunity there to uh, kind of play against them a little bit. Um, and then uh, – all right. And then just jumping back a little bit, um, race four, anything stand out to you? I think you were uh, – Race four, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier is that I'm going to be using, you know, forward horses in the sprints. Okay. So I think that three, uh, the form's a little dirty on it. If you look back a couple of races, those time form figs are much the best here in this group. Yeah. So it can, if it can run even to 80% of that talent, then I think he's right there. Okay. I, I would agree with that. And then we know Farron's going to be forward too. Um, give a really nice ride. Uh, I think it was right when they were starting out the meet. Uh, and it was more closure friendly those first two days. Uh-huh. And she just uh, she just got run down. So on this track, I think it's going to be much tailored, much more uh, fair to the, her run style. Gets a half furlong less here. So I, I really like that four a lot. Farron's going to drift up. They never bet Farron. I love her. Right. Uh, so she should be a uh, pretty good value. She's probably going to get like nine to two, five to one on it. So I like that four a lot. So I'm mostly through the three, four there. I was using up in arms. The Terraza kid gets over from the – um, in the last race, like I was talking about, uh, right. he gets the fog here. Five's more like a churn and burn, it's more of a grinder. I'm not sure if he has the the strength or the the runway to kind of get up, but he should be right there at the end. And then uh, the Ravelli will be the favorite, but catching all these prices in the early, I don't want to lose out by not using the eleven. Right. So uh, I think we use the eleven more of a defensive technique to okay. not lose out on the ticket. Yeah, I was looking three, four, eleven. Actually, I should probably pull the video up here and pop this in. And uh, take a look. We got two minutes to post. And uh, seven's holding it five to two. Pick five cool. Hundred and twenty-two thousand. Beauty. And that, I mean, that's gonna jump, right? I mean, that's gonna jump big time. So. Um, last tick yeah yeah i gotta pop mine in here too all right so i'm gonna go one three here since you sold me on the one to go with the three is speed and you're fading the speed going one five seven right yeah i like to in the routes i like to play a little bit more fair than the than the sprints so a little med pack action a little close off the pace yep fair enough yeah, I really want to look, look for the rail. I mean, that rail's been uh, been pretty good as of late. So uh, see how that goes. I mean, that's going to inform us, I think, a lot for later races. Yeah, we'll pay attention here, see how it looks. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I'm in. All right, I'm doing the same. Good luck, everybody, as we warm up to the first and uh, another great week of action at Turfway. And uh, never disappoints with some big prices and uh, it's fun results. Time for the uh, Wednesday night opener, number seven, Athena. All right. We can't exactly call the race as it's going on, but. No, it's, it'll be tough, but I will give some reaction here. <laughs> Yeah, nothing wrong with that. 
The nice thing about Tony Callo, the one nice thing about Tony Callo is that he actually calls the load. Unlike Jimmy, who would be like, oh, last horse in. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, man? I always thought that was kind of frustrating. Um, what do we got? A couple left to go. Well, the thing is, like, it's so hard to handicap these races, right? So you got 12 horses and you're dealing with synthetic. And uh, there's just so much going on that I, I feel like, you know, you know, you need that last little bit. And and so, it's yeah. like, you know, you're trying to put your plays in, your pick fives, your trifectas, whatever. And so, you know, it helps to have that uh, narration so you don't have to look at the screen to see how much time okay. you have left. So I'm going to take that off the screen there. So uh, we still don't get any trouble from anybody watching it, but we can certainly talk this through. And there goes the three to the front. Yeah, so Farron didn't go. She's sitting just off. Jane, I knew would be forward, but they're not really pressing. I don't know if Gerardo's going fast. I don't know what he's doing here. They're pretty bunched in the back, so it doesn't look too fast. Twenty-five, not. This is his race. Jane's in no man's land right here. Not applying any pressure. Not doing anything. Yeah, that's on the six. Yep. Yeah, that's a tough spot. But you're right. She, Jane Elliott likes to ride forward, and uh, yeah. surprised she didn't get go. Maybe the horse just didn't get out of the gate. Yeah, I can't but. believe I can't believe uh, Farron didn't go. So forty nine and four. They're bunching this, up here. Yeah, this isn't exactly a quality. You know, these aren't the most quality horses. So uh, no. Well, but the threes. Yeah, Walt and John McKee in the let in back. Just no pace to run out here. But maybe enough for somebody here. Three's got a little run, it looks like. Four's pretty wide. Let's see if Axel has anything in the seven up the rail. Yeah, one's got a little run if you can get the out of the box, right? Well, that's mm. quite the box. They're kind of limping home here. Come on, one. Get get out of there. It's four. I don't know. That's fair, huh? It's four. Four and then the one. I might be ahead of you on the video. Oh, well, get up, baby. Nope. Too long. Whoa. Just missed. Oh. The, the, right by FTLC. Oh, we had it there with the one. Yeah, he's close. Just timed it too wet. Waited too long. Yeah. Um, yeah, Walt Rodriguez. He kind of, yeah, he's back far. The pace wasn't strong. Almost got a photo, but uh, no, he never got ahead, did he? Yeah. Four was a Cinderella story. There you go. Second lifetime win. I guess for all these, and then two, they were all shooting for. Um, four was tough to have. I mean, it just uh, didn't seem to have a lot of great form over the synthetic. Um, I guess it started its career doing synthetic routes and just kind of fourth and fifth middle of the pack stuff. Yeah, I didn't um, love the. Uh... I didn't love the wrap on lines from the four. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I didn't really like much of anything on the four, but uh um gave him a nice ride. Yeah, Walt just uh saved the ground, he just waited too long to get out. Yeah, four was uh looks like Fernando de la Cruz, is that right? Yep, FDS. Yeah. Yeah. There's John McKee, 18 wide. Thanks for coming out, guy. Yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. You you know, I the tough part there is like just nothing opened up for him, right? So it's like there was, they're all kind of still in the race. And uh, I mean, there was no choice but for Walter Rodriguez to do Yeah, I mean, if there's any time. pace there, the one in five probably roll. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's why they made the pick four, right? That's right. Gonna watch fire back at that. Um, Interesting. I mean, I don't know what we could really make of that race. Uh, they went slow. The speed stopped. They yeah, were kind of level. The closures got there. The four kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Was the four on the rail? Did the four get the rail? A little trip out, save ground. Um, I didn't. I didn't see. We probably have to watch the replay a little bit. And. Uh, so yeah, what... I'm going to stick with you know routes are fair and and sprints are forward. So we'll see what the sprint looks like in the next race. Okay. All right, well. Almost a good start. Congrats yeah, that would have been a really nice five-to-one start. All right. Let's see. So 
surprised how empty that seven was on the rail. Yeah, let's see. Um, is the stream uh, okay for, for you? Can you uh, hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you good. Okay. The actual uh, the actual video on the stream is a little choppy. Yeah, yeah. The stream. Yeah, that's, that's always going to be choppy because it's coming through like third hand or what have you. Um, yeah, the assumption is that, you know, hopefully most people have their own video up. I mean, it's it's nice to throw up there, though, if uh, after the race. If, oh, yeah, uh, it's nice. Okay, we'll see these payouts. I mean, it should be a nice try. Both the three and the seven finished out of the money, so it should be good. Yeah. Wow. That'll be, yeah, it'll be decent, just like all middle prices, right? Yeah, I got to try to uh, see if I can pick up some Superfectas later on. I didn't find a whole lot early on. All right. So, all right. So let's talk about uh, jockeys, you know, for a minute. You know, that's one thing I think you've had a lot of success with paying attention to jockeys and how they ride or you know, different things and tendencies and stuff like that. And it wasn't something that was really – Part of my game for a long time but since playing with you and others have kind of you know gotten into that more but uh why do you think it's so important first of all and and how much do you weight the jockeys in addition to the speed figures and other things it's important you know it's kind of nice when you can just if you're able to put aside the jockey bias and just handicap the horses for what they are um but you're a fool if you think jockeys don't matter they do and certain jockeys do certain things better than others um so right there, we knew we knew Jane was going to be forward. We knew Farron was going to be forward. I thought Farron would send a little more. She actually gave him a nice, patient ride. Mm -hmm. um, again, just one of those horses caught in no man's land. Um, but other than that, you know, the bugs more like more than more often than not are going to be forward because the the trainers are using the weight breaks for uh, the speed horses to try to hold on. Um, you know, even on the main circuit, Louis Louis Saez rides dirt. You know, forward horse is the best. Um, Irad is terrible on the lead. You know, he's Irad more often than not gets the best horse in the race, so that kind of prevails and runs through biases a little bit. And yeah, he's got a little wiggle room with with how he rides. But more often than not, Irad's looking to sit off the dueling leaders uh, in that tracking spot, and he kind of just rolls on by in the stretch after they're tired. Um, yeah. So that's kind of his thing. You know, Rosario, uh, he's pretty good on speed on the turf. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, well, I guess he was earlier in his career pretty good on turf closers. He's kind of bitten all of us in that lately this year. Um, and yeah, you know, every every jockey has has their strengths and weaknesses, and and as you get more experience in this game, as you watch more races, you'll realize who's good at what. Um, so you'll see, you know, in in the summertime at Saratoga, Javier Castellano, uh, he gets you know outgunned by all these big names and all these big trainers, but he'll find himself on a Todd Pletcher. Or you know, a David Donk or somebody like that, and he'll give a nice ride because he's a good turf rider. Uh, he rides, you know, he's not the most efficient rider. You'll see him on Web Slinger be you know six wide, six wide, and he'll lose on the best horse because he gets lazy rides. But you can also give great rides. You know, the ride on Mage, the ride on Archangelo, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And you know, whatever it is, people don't bet him on turf, and, and there's value on that. Um, you know, Haramio down at Gulfstream. Fantastic forward front end rider. I don't want him on a closer. It's just not what I want. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. You no know, means are they are they not capable of doing something that I don't think they can do. Like Irad can win on speed, but more often than not, Irad is the favorite in the race and he's over bet. And I don't think his ability to ride speed equals the horse's chances of winning the race with him up. So that's it's right. just comes with experience. The more the more exposed you are to racing, the more knowledge you have experience you have with the races with the riders um, and there's colonies you know there's colonies at every different circuit you know kentucky california florida new york toronto up at woodbine they all have their jockey colonies and everybody does something a little bit different yeah um, so you need to familiarize yourself with that uh and you know you can't be lazy in this game it, you gotta work hard you gotta put the effort in there's there's no shortcuts in horse racing yeah well so, one of the things we've seen with the data even you know is um, you know, I think for an inexperienced jockey, you talk about like apprentices and, and whatnot, 
you know, one turn races, especially dirt racing in, in, in this country, it's just speed, right? And there's not a lot of strategy to just kind of send your horse out to the front, hope to get the lead, or maybe you sit in second a little bit, but you're just basically sending. Um, you know, you contrast that with uh, a mile and a 16th turf race where you've got two turns, you've got to get out, get position, tuck in, wait, decide when to time things and then where to go. It's it's incredibly more complex. Right. And so I think that's where the experienced riders really kind of, you know, can, you know, sort of, you know, have their way with the inexperienced riders. And then uh, I think synthetic sort of the same way. It's just uh, it's it's a lot harder to ride. I mean, we're having a hard time handicapping it. Imagine the riders trying to figure out, you know, where they want to ride. Um, it's just not easy. Right. Yeah, it's um, and the big fields make it even more difficult. It's a challenge for sure. Yeah. That's so here's the, here's the four. replay. If you just want to take a quick look, it looks like the uh, oh wow, the four is further back. Yeah, the one was on the rail. Four was way in the back. Look at the four three wide there. Huh. So FDLC had a lot of horse then. And he closed from dead last on a slow pace. So that's interesting, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's almost like so you were saying sprints forward and route's fair but that looks like route's closing yeah if route was fair that three would have held on much better right because right there jane's not really applying pressure until they get to the turn right yeah we're like one minute into the race and yeah three takes off here to avoid yeah. the pressure i mean look at fdlc goes wide too he just gets first run mm -hmm. and wall and john mckee just wait too long yeah See how, see how far ahead FDLC is right now, and they're yeah. still waiting. Right, and he's just, so but he does, and he also doesn't get stopped, right? So he, yeah. he basically takes a three for a long run in or whatever, uh, the whole time, never stops, always keeps coming. Uh, the one is still right, still not free right here. Yeah, one's leaning on the five a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, if the one, yeah, the one got out sooner, it would have gone by. Yeah, any pace, and it's there too. Yeah. It's a nice ride by by De La Cruz. He moved early and it won in the race. Yeah. Interesting. And so then uh let's see, the one was from the back too. Was the two also? So three close. No, Farron sat behind Jane on the rail. Okay. You're talking about the two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's interesting, you know, talking about the riders too. Um, you mentioned big fields, and I have a theory. I, I I told Ed I, I need to run some data on this one, but uh, you know, like Irad Ortiz can like really, I think uh, you know, dominate, especially in like you know, mid-size or small fields in New York. He doesn't really dominate at Keeneland, and I think the reason is because you know you're dealing with full fields, and so when you're in a full field of 10, 11, 12, one, you've got a lot less opportunity and freedom to move your horse around. Uh, go challenge another speed horse or, or what have you. And, I, and I, I think that might be part of it. You know, it's just, uh, but in small fields where there's like, you know, two favorites and he's got one of them, you know, often he can kind of take advantage of that and really uh, do some race riding and, uh, you know, have his way with some of these other riders. Yeah. And that's why, you know, the computers love the dirt, right? Small fields, mm -hmm. super efficient figure wise, you know, they know exactly what to expect and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Speaking of the jockeys, I want to throw some of the turf weight uh, jockey stats I've got here. Yeah, we'll see if we can can read them. But uh, yeah, let me expand that a little bit. Um, so I kind of color coded some of the uh, stronger impacts, and uh, you can see I'm in Machado's leading, uh, not only a twenty one percent. Uh, win percentage, but a 41%, 46% HR and impact. So uh, just uh, doing extremely well. But, you know, again, talking about those splits, look in, uh, in sprints, he's winning 15%, but the impact of minus two, bas it's basically holding for serve, right? He's winning with the ones he should, getting the occasional winner here or there. But uh, look at the routes, 26% win percentage. That's at Turfway Park. That's amazing. And the impact, of course, plus eighty-one. So he's winning basically twice as many races as as the odds would indicate that he should. Uh, that's that's what that plus eighty-one means. He should have probably won 
eight races and his studies won 15. So that's fairly phenomenal so far. Um, can you see that, Kevin, or is it too small? Yeah, I see it. I'm just wondering, you know, he started off really hot. Yeah. He's kind of cooled down a little bit. Yeah, I think it's been a mix. I think there's been, been some steady wins. Um, let's see. I do have, if we go back through Chris, so this was the week prior. Yeah, it was 27 and 19. Mm -hmm. So uh, he kind of kept it fairly similar. Uh, yeah, he dropped a little bit the last week. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Um, ridiculously hot. Yeah. Some of the other riders. Um, Woof, I mean, look at G. Oh, so bad. Yeah, Corrales. Wow. I mean, from what he did last year to now be uh, only a 9% win percentage, minus 54% impact. It's terrible. Terrible and really every which way. I mean, it, and, you know, people were expecting him to do better, right? So people were betting on – and he's been on good horses. Trainers have put him on good horses. Yeah. So, him, and, uh, uh, him and Ramos, they were the two of the top two guys here last year and that just has not translated to this year so far. And maybe they're riding to last year's track and not this year's maybe. track, you know? You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, look at Burgos. Is he really winning 23%? Wow. So – Axel, it's pretty interesting to see Axel's. You know, he was, I thought he'd been riding fairly well, but he's just riding to expectation. I, yeah. think, I think maybe because he gets so many Cox mounts. He's getting good mounts from everybody, I think. Yeah. Same with, uh, where's Tyler Connor? He's probably the same, right? Because he gets those juiced up JT yep. horses. Yep. Yeah. And he's a little better in sprints than routes. Um. <laughs> But uh, but Burgos is doing well, and this uh, Yarmory Korea has done really well. Yeah, she's so, great. She's riding bombs, and uh, look at this going route 17 percent winners and plus 114. That's like darn your best on the page. Yeah, she's been riding great. Yeah, she seems to get horses in good position and and uh, get some good rides. Yeah, we haven't seen we haven't seen the mayor Declan Cannon much. Not nearly as much as we saw him last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but these guys like Chef, you know, Alberto Burgos, he should be getting some more mounts. Like, right there, right. if I'm his agent, I'm showing people that. I'm saying, hey, he knows how to ride a horse. Yeah. I'm not very familiar with him, but, yeah, he's doing great this meet. Well, his, his agent needs to get on that and get him some quality mounts because the way he's yeah. riding, he deserves them. Yeah, compared to some of the others. I know you were down on Cedillo. He's at 11%. Um, yeah, it's – What's strange about Abel is that his agent's working overtime. He's getting these Cherie Devel mounts. He's getting the Mike Maker mounts. Um, so he's he's been on some live horses. So I'm surprised yeah. that surprised that that number isn't negative. Yeah, and he's about yeah he's about holding serve. I mean, but he's I mean he's won 11 races. You know that's not bad. And the other thing too is now don't forget we're looking at the top of the the, the standings here. So if we start moving down, yeah, um, look they'll, at the red. Down. At some in the bottom here. Oh, Perry. Um, yeah. One for 23 for Perry. One for 24, Julio Felix. Oh, for 20. Oh, Summer Polly. You know, she's a triple bug, so we can forgive that. Yeah. I mean, Matilda's also a bug. Um, Sammy yeah. Bermuda's picking up where he left off last year. It took him 100 mounts to get his first win, so it looks like he's going to do the same this year. Yeah. yeah there's some some pretty tough results there. Gabriel Saez. Um, game size are pretty lost. Yeah. Now here I would, you know, I would be forgiving with only 10 mounts. Uh, now Jane Elliott, I think this is sort of, oh, by win place show, but uh, 0 for 28 on the win. Although she's been riding a lot of bombs. I mean, I don't know how many of those had a shot, but five thirds. Yeah. Declan Carroll is just a bad jockey. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So that's just a look at the jockeys and uh, hopefully some of the stats and, uh, yeah, but out there in the chat, if you guys see Yar Marie, she's been riding really well, so she's definitely a use. Yeah, let's we'll see uh, see what we got going on in the chat here. Oh, I can read the chat it, up. Yeah, here we go. Ryan, 4-4 four, four double looks good. All right, what's the problem? David Wagner says Dilla Cruz is lost. It does seem like he's lost, but he did, did get up there. Um. Matt Seed. Bermuda's been due for three years. Yeah, that's about 
That's about right. Yeah. David said he can't he can't lose. So David's David's high on FDLC right now. All right. Cool. All right. Uh let's look at the odds here. Um Scott and Caitlin are on the three. Screen yeah, magic. I don't love the price in the three. Thought the ward would be favorite. How are Will Pace looking? Okay, the ward's gonna be favorite on Will Pace. All right, so that makes me feel better. So it okay, so you're saying the ward should should end up favored. Yeah, they'll probably flip flop. It'll probably be two to one on the ward and five to two on the three. Yeah. So he's so, taking a lot of wow. Yeah. Five to one and the wards two to one. Wow. So I mean it's re really focused. If you can get around uh three, eight, and eleven here. Um yeah, so I can't remember if I mentioned so the I was talking about the the nine had the Ocala work of nine, uh, it was a nine and four very fast work. The one did as well. Um so these are horses that you know went through the sale very fast, um, you know, sold for a decent chunk of change. Um you know, the question is they're in maiden claimers now. So, you know, are they trying to cut bait and get the get what they can out of a maiden 50? Uh get the horse claimed. Like you said, maybe they're they're advertising for to get the horse claimed, but uh mm -hmm. probably not the one because it's it started uh with a poor start in Churchill for maiden 120,000 maiden special. But sometimes these things bounce back. Um there's uh anyway, there's some inkling of talent there somewhere. Yeah, you never know how a horse responds to Lasix. And I'm the way Joe Rock has been riding, like I said earlier, I think he's gonna be forward and try to be forward. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. With these with these cheap these cheap races with these lightly raced horses, it, it's really a grab bag. Unless somebody really stands out, it's like it's almost natural for people to play wide. Yeah. So oh yeah. I mean, you know, you you've seen Ed and I talk about it with the one of the great things with the first timer report, I think, is if you can, you know, really you're not gonna be right every time, but if you can kind of narrow down a little bit in some of these maiden races and not go six wide, I think it really just helps you, you know, hit the other races and maybe go wide in another race that's a true spread race. Um it, you know, sometimes it's easier said than but than done, but uh yeah, I mean it's just it helps a lot. Like I think too many people just spread in the first time of races is what I'm what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, you can you can definitely eliminate some. Like yeah. what what did you think of this 10? I, I really liked this run of Keelan. Uh was wide uh against Tarifa, three wide, four wide on the turn. Thought it ran pretty well for you know two thirds of the race and uh now gets some class relief. Yeah, I mean Keelan seven furlong is a tough first ask, right? It's a weird yeah. distance. Yep. It's really classy. You know, people point to Keelan all the time. It's like the Saratoga of the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, those purses are huge. So I can't tell if this is, you know, August Dawn Farm, if they wanted to get a run at Keelan and try to go for the big, the big price. Um and, and Robert Medina, here's the angle I took on the 10. Uh, you know, Axel Concepcion's agent is Brad Cox's son. And Robert Medina has ties to Brad Cox. So I didn't know if this was a favor mount. I don't know how Axel ended up on this horse. Um, you know, to me, I see the three furlong work. It's the bullet. In my opinion, any thoroughbred horse should be able to run a sub 36, right. three furlongs. Right. So I don't really put too much weight on the three furlong works. Um, yeah, I agree completely. But, I mean, I don't think it's a – it's not a bad sign on a, on a 12 to 1 shot. No, absolutely not. Um, you get Lasix, uh, you get the the weight break now. Um, so if you like it, it's worth a shot. What is it, thirteen to one now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm going to use this as an eight, but uh, yeah, I mean, just because you know this eight's fast, it's getting bet, but uh, I, I'm unconvinced. Dury's not done well with firsters or or maiden claiming firsters. We've talked about the ward. We don't really like the 11 doesn't look very, very fast so the, the three looks good i just kind of feel like what else you know um what if uh what if this comes off the pace who could win this off the pace or is that the, the three the five you know if you're if you can stomach three percent jockey miranda the five's probably had a little chance to come off the pace mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean an okay race last time the two uh victor lebron strangled the horse for the entire turn 
Um, if you let him run a little earlier, I think he's a little closer finishing that race. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted that stalking trip, I think two five is what you're looking at. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just off of that first race, I think there's a chance that it's a little bit more closing tonight. Maybe that's wishful yeah. thinking, but I'm I'm curious to see how this sprint plays. Yeah, I hear you on the five. I mean, that's not the worst thought. Um, he just looks slower than some of these, but you never know. Yeah, based on the jockey, I'd, I'd rather play the ten than the five. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, we got five minutes to go, and uh, I mean, yeah, the three three still looks good. I think the three should be able to come off it enough, right? I mean. Basically, do that Ellis race six by three, seventh by two. Yeah, if you're looking to beat the favorites, um, the the five, what did I say, five, two five, but I think the three is the is the horse to beat here. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm singling the three and a pick four. There you go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go three ten. Um, okay, and then yeah, we'll go from there. Let's see, I mean, there's still enough. I mean, I think there's definitely the, the rest of the sequence is deep enough that this pick four should pay pretty well. You want to pull out so far 60k, you should take like 110 maybe. Yeah, just getting through it that's the trick. Yeah, I mean, to all the new horse racing fans out there, you're gonna lose a lot, you're gonna lose by 90% of the time, maybe more. It's uh it's a tough game. So when you do win that 10%, it's got to pay and cover the cost of the 90% losses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially something like a pick four. I mean, your hit rate, <laughs> 10% would be lucky for, I, I think, a lot of times. Yeah. So you um, have to get used to losing in this sport. That's just that's just the fact of the matter. It is what it is. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, you got to cut out the bad plays, but uh, you're right. You got to have, when you're right, it's, you got to, you got to, you got to win something. You can't win, you know, pick fours that pay 50 bucks and trifectas that pay 50 bucks and things like that. That's just not, not yeah, going to get you anywhere. Yeah, your hit rate's got to be like 40% of you do that. Yeah. Won't get you anywhere. Won't get anybody anywhere. Um, all right. So with that in mind, the five in race five is really going to get hammered, isn't it? Um. Just wondering how much I want to put on that one. We got a Feezy playing some supers in the chat, huh? I love it. Get the chat back up. Cindy, who you got? You got the four? All right. Bobby Marks' Cinderella story into Beauty and Bolt for the Disney double. Kevin Phillips selects, says he likes the Drury Horse, the 8, over the 3511. Yeah, we got some good, good picks, good plays in the chat. Keep them coming. <laughs> Get some hopefully get some people cashing some big tickets. That's what it's about. It's a hell of a lot more fun, right? Yeah, no one likes to lose, but you end up losing. <laughs> it is what it is. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna stick with the 310. All right, pick four's in. Yeah. Good luck, everyone. Yep, same here. Pick four is in. Um, pretty flat board, you know. I don't know that I mean there's like this is definitely a race I would not be super interested in the superfecta with uh there's only two horses higher than fifteen to one. I mean, I guess that can change, but yeah, the uh, so the three and eleven did flip, so the ward is the favorite. Mm-hmm. I can't believe the drawer is taking this much money. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's fast. I think he went for a good amount. What did he go for at Ocala? 
Um, it's not on there, but yeah. And you were talking about the OBS, so I'm sure people saw that too. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. I don't know. David's got a three seven ice cold DD. Good luck. The uh, the jury horses. I mean, they, they just uh, they don't. He he works them pretty well, right? So they like look good first time out, um, frequently. But I just kind of feel like they don't really, you know, they don't necessarily run, you know, to it, or, or the odds are too short. If you, will, you know, yeah, I'm I'm happy he moved on from Malcolm Franklin. That guy's a terrible jockey. Oh yeah, <laughs> not a fan, huh? No. All right, so I'm gonna get one. Uh, one more. All right. Well, good luck, everybody, as they're in the gate here for race two. And uh, we can kind of talk it through here a little bit. Um, see if we can get uh, get another favorite here. But, I mean, more importantly, let's see that how this track plays. Now we got a sprint. Yeah. Let's see what Walt does with the ward. Let's see if Joe sends the one. I'm interested. All right, race two, Maiden Claimer going six and a half. See how the rail plays. And, uh, you know, we, well, we got a second here. We've been talking about it. It's been a tough meet this year. It seems like the track's just not played the same as last year. So, yeah. And I think that's, uh, that's why we've had these. Uh, I feel like it's been more favorite oriented. Yeah. Because uh, I guess naturally just people bet speed. It, and a couple yep. of the bombs have been inexplicable. All right, here we go. One stumbles out. Wall is like raiding. And there's the jury, but the two looks like he's going to go with him. Ramos is not on the rail. The one's a little bit there. Huh. Interesting. LeBron isn't string, but I like the chances here. <laughs> All right, so the eight's too wide. Wow, the three. Okay, three's a couple wide, too. Looks like he's strangling. Well, I'm the just choking the hell out of that three. Yeah. One looks okay on that rail. Yeah. And where's that 10 I was talking about? He's nowhere. He's in the back. Well, the eight's moving. There's not really uh anybody... eight's in hand, too. Yeah, nobody's – he's in hand. No one's coming. Yeah. Hey. Well, that was perfect. I used them in the pick five, but not in the pick four. Yeah. Hey, that's the way she goes. It is the way she goes. All right. Let's watch this three coming down the lane and see if it gets close just to kind of get a feel for this track a little bit. I think that's the 10. Is that the 10? Oh, yeah. You're right. 10 was in last. 2308 4699. I feel like they, they didn't really go too fast up front. Yeah, it's pretty slow. So, hmm. all right. Well, good. Congrats to everybody that had the eight. Congrats to everybody fading the ward. I'm proud of everyone. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, did the 11 get a call? I don't think so. Lost well, that wide and steady fade back. And five to two, huh? Wow. All right. And then that was uh, Sprint playing forward, at least for the winner. The ten, wow, the 10 got bet down at, at the end a lot to five to one. He was more like 12 to one, I think, when they were going in the gate. Or at least at a couple minutes to post. All right. No bueno. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, you know, both of us have done pretty well at Turfway over the last couple of years. You've done exceptionally well. Uh, I don't know about you. I've just found it tougher this year. Like I said, it's probably been a little more favorites. And then the bombs that have come in have been to some degree inexplicable or a little tough to use. And, um, a lot of times we've had races where some nice closers have come and made some nice runs, but they just can't get there at least for the win. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's a it's a tough track, but it pays extremely well. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, so Tommy Drury gets gets a winner first time out. 
Hey, and, 0 for uh, 25. Now he's one for 26. Good yeah. on you. Let's see what the stats were. So it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of tough to take that one based on that. Um, you know, that's interesting too. So this was a horse that uh, I think you paid they paid one hundred fifty thousand for him or something like that. So you know, when they're let it, let him go in a maiden claimer for much less than what they paid for, you know, it's like okay, well, you know, what is that telling you, and is that sort of the thing you want to be on or not? You know, um, let me pull it up here. Yeah, Indian Ink. Okay, so it was. Oh, I don't have the number. Okay, so it was a twenty-five thousand dollars stud fee for Run Happy, and uh, it it was not bought at the sale. So I guess maybe it was a buyback. Maybe that makes more sense. Yeah, ten ran pretty well. Just I, I was really surprised to see the ten that far back. So I, I don't know if it yeah. got. I mean, he closed strong. Yeah. So it's just a weak, a pretty weak maiden claimer at 50. Yeah. But uh, the board's pretty flat. And then, like I said, the 10 got hit pretty hard. The computers probably hit that one pretty good at the end. And that's going to pay pretty nicely for a try and super. I didn't really like the nine. He was the longest price on the board. And the four you were talking about. Yeah, the four is just kind of like, eh. Yeah. Money was right on the eight. Cut in half for a reason. Easy winner, much the best. Yeah. I mean, the works were there for sure. Um, I just have a hard time going on, you know, going against a trainer pattern like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the try wasn't that big though. 162 for 50 cents. Definitely not bad. I mean, that's great if you got it. Uh $47 double. That's good. How's chat doing? Sounds right in the essays in here. You guys don't know what they're talking about. I have $93. Hey, good stuff, John. Good hit. Six bucks spent. I don't even have a reasonable something. I hit for 93 bucks. That's how you do it. That is how yeah. you do it. Good work, John. Yeah, no, you should take that early bird senior buffet next time. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of replies. Candace says, run happy on the synthetic is money. Um, he's, he does well on synthetic, run happy. Uh, I'd say more on the routes and the sprints, but uh, definitely, definitely not bad. I think he's a kind of mid-range there. What was he? Run Happy's 11% uh, on the sprint, 16% first time out. So that was that was good. Sponsored by Mattress Mac. That's right. Claiborne Farm stall one, right? Um, all right. Is there anything to glean from the replay here? 10 was all in the back and wide. So was 9. Yeah. 1, 2 are on the rail. But, it, hmm. I mean, the, the A was under a hold the entire time. Yeah, no, he was much the best. So you just look the rest, and then I guess on a more fair, when all horses have form, I guess we'll just play more off pace. I mean, that's kind, of what, that's kind of what I'm thinking because this, yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is the race flow was advantage to the, to the winner, but the track was advantage to the runner-up. Yeah, I mean the nine came up the rail, the ten went wide. I mean the nine or the rail didn't carry that two. Mm -mm. The four is kind of wide as well. The two is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that whole I mean, was zip code. And coming off a you know forty-seven half for a sprint. Uh, yeah, slow. Yeah, they just came home slow. That's what it was, and then the ten was able to pick up some ground. All right, on to the on to the next. So that would make this one a fade then, if we're going to do that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was looking for a reason to fade this one, and I just couldn't quite get there. But uh, do we have enough speed to go with it is the question. And it seemed like the profile for the mile and the 16th races have been more like stalkers. Um, Kevin Phillips says he's alive to the 10 here. Awesome. Nice, Kev. We got we got cooking. I assume that's a pick three, but or a double. But either would be very nice. I do like the 10. Little little Juan Cano with biscuit off the claim, bluegrass parkway, hoping to find some old form. Nothing wrong with that. What do you think it is eight? I, I I liked it. I thought it was sneaky. I was I was a spread here, but I, I like the one seven eight ten. Um, the eight is an English Channel, and uh, they threw it on the synthetic in a sprint. And you know English English channels aren't sprinters. They're just like they don't even you know. Somebody said one time they don't even begin to wake up until it's like a mile. Uh, you know they're good mile and a half turf horses, so I wouldn't expect that the horse. Would have been a good sprinter. They threw it, you know, threw it in, the, in a sprint to get a race. It was uh, way over its head. So I, I thought, and, and it had all kinds of trouble. So I thought throughout that race, and I thought on form, the eight could be dangerous here at a price. Did you like him yeah, at all? So my thought process on the eight was this horse is running non graded at uh, at Turf Paradise and mm -hmm. at, at Canterbury and it was running well. It was being competitive. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this Alessi guy either claims him or they, they do a trainer switch and he gives him the rest of 2023 off comes back for, you know, an OC and it just runs out the back. So is there something wrong with this horse? Could be. I mean, I, I guess what I was kind of looking at, I mean, that, that race, I think there was just a, a lot higher class than here. Um, you ran in the middle of the race a little bit and, I don't know, just with the trouble, I was just willing to throw it out. It's a squeeze steadied uh, back from the gate with no chance thereafter. Um, I didn't watch the replay. I just kind of took the chart collar. It's word. It's not that often you see, like, no mm -hmm. chance. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting and enough reason to kind of just go right off that. Yeah, I mean, if you bring, up your, you bring up your jockey stats on Tiago Canudo, they're not great. So No, no. They're, oh, yeah, that's right. right. And that's that's the last rider. Yeah, those those are not pretty. Uh, he did get a winner though. Uh, I think it was last week, right? Yeah. Congrats to the backers who supported him the entire time. He got seven to two. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Let's see. All right. I'm just trying to get my daughter to get my dog out before he's he's like huffing at me. <laughs> the background. Um, all right, there we go. Seven to one, two to one on the ten. Yeah, figured he would come down, but so I guess the question is, who's going to go with the one? Um, That's a good question. I mean, they went kind of fast last time, and um. Sharp speed to the front, dueled into the stretch. So I think that's impressive from that perspective that he was able to do all that and still hold on for a, you know a close fourth. Um, but I, I mean, what we've seen so far tonight, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, and I don't trust Lagunas to ration it properly. Yeah. So that's why I liked the three so much, is because he's going to be forward, probably just sitting right off. Mm -hmm. And I think that Mohique is a better jockey than. Than Gabriel Lagunas is, and I think he can he can kind of get first run and hold them off. But the way that the track's been playing, kind of want to look more to the six seven here. Yeah, I, I yeah seriously. Okay, so let's look at the six. Let's look at the six. Yeah, this is the. Per I think the six is the perfect running style for this race because um, I don't think you want to come from the clouds necessarily. No, uh, you, you, look you definitely don't want to be in last. You're right. Yeah, and uh, I just thought he was a little bit behind some of these on quality but you know if the track profile's changing a little bit um you know looking at your three with orlando mojica if he goes after the one i think the one might be you know in trouble um and, and then all right so you're saying let's look at the seven 
I think the seven looks good. I really like that effort last out. It was that the super speed in the stretch, the rail was carrying those forward horses. Mm -hmm. And he was still loping along, making up some ground. So I think on a more fair track, which tonight looks to be the case, I like the seven a lot. And you're mm -hmm. getting five to one on both right now. So, yeah. So let's see. I'm just trying to think. The... Oh, there's my dog. Hang on one second. All right. I got yeah. my daughter on it. No worries. I'll talk to the chat. Yeah. All right, Kevin Phillips, pick three. All right, what are we paying? Buck seventy three, not bad. Not bad, little favorite though. Horse is smoking the double, so you're probably not going to get much more than two to one on it. I am firmly against this one. I don't think this speed's going to hold on. I don't think Gabe Lagunas is a good jockey, so I don't think he rations it properly. <clears throat> I don't know what Jane's going to do on the two. Like we talked about earlier, I think. Uh, I think Jane. Tends to be more forward of a jockey. I don't really see her on closers too much. I really think the three is going to sit, hit pocket, and do the pace pressure. Um, I don't think the four is a factor. Hey, point is interesting. Timmy Gurton was uh, was really hot here last year. Um, not the case this year. He's just not the case. He's been uh, slow. I think he only has one win so far. Meanwhile, last year he was like, he's like 30%. So he definitely has not returned to his turf way form like some of the riders here. So I think the five is a fade for me. But like we were talking about, I think six and seven are my are my top picks here, and then use a little bit of the three just because of the price. Um, Mark likes the eight. I don't. Uh, I think that this, it's a stinky drop, and that there's something wrong with the horse. But if the horse finds its its turf paradise form, then it can definitely go. This ten is interesting. Cano is always money off the claim. That's that price is probably right for the ten, and then the eleven is the wild card. Our Terry Young baby. He was. You know uh, Sorry, well, you know what's interesting about the 10 is uh, the 10 and the 7 ran uh, together last time. Sorry, sorry. The, the 10's last start was against the 7. The 7's run since then, and his number jumped up quite a bit. Yeah, so no, the 10 is legit, yeah. If you, so if you, if you basically, you know, if that figure is right on the 7 and you didn't miraculously improve 8 points, uh, th that means that the 10, you're going to see some good improvement here yeah. if the figures match. Sorry. Let's see, John. I like number one. I like number two, blah, blah, blah. Pick one or two words. You don't get to pick four. Just give us your top picks. Well, John, if you need to turn your hearing aid up, we did give out our top picks. <laughs> now, handicapping the race, and we're going through each horse, so maybe pay a little bit better attention. I don't know if you're napping or your TV's up too loud. I'm feisty. Um, um, no, I'm just – Having a conversation with the chat. Yeah, exactly. The uh, yeah, no, I mean, the, I I hear you. I mean, it, this is such a tough stuff in Turfway. I mean, we're also t tend to be horizontal players, so we're trying to get uh, a pick three or pick four, or pick five sequence. So um, you often need four horses to get through a certain leg, uh, or you might use a couple A's, a couple B's. I'm kind of reevaluating based on how the track was playing, you know, in the first couple, but uh, I was one, seven, eight, 10. I'm like you said, I think I'm going to start downgrading this one a little bit because definitely didn't like the way that speed was going. So right. There you go. A picture in the back of your door. Ryan. I did. I did. Yeah. You know why? Because I have so much horse racing stuff hung up around my house. that I have to hide some, otherwise yeah. my wife will kill me. There you go. That's a good strategy. Who is it? Who's behind your door? That's just a picture. It's a print of Saratoga oh, from way okay. back in the day. And how far are you from Saratoga? Uh, I am like 25 minutes. Nice. Been there a time or two? Just a few. Yeah. It's a great place. Um, all right. So, yeah. So there's kind of a rundown. You were saying something about the 11, and I interrupted you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what the 11 is going to do. Julio Felix tends to be more of a forward jockey. So, you know, the it's flash and speed last down and kind of faded. Um, so I think he's probably going to be a pace factor as well. So he might be the one pushing the one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't get excited about this Hague point. I mean, he's not terrible, but wow, six to one. Yeah, they're not expecting to take money. I much prefer, much prefer the seven. So there you go, there you go, John Bressio. Top pick this race is the seven. There you go. That's another top pick. 
Uh, Scott's top pick, Scott Shapiro, is the two, Smokey Lee. Interesting. Yeah. Spanko's not having a great meet. These uh, earlier, the two's runs on the synthetic routes um, last year are pretty good. I mean, they're not bad. Five year old now. Yeah, I can see that on the two. Eleven to one's not bad. No, I didn't like it. That trainer is like over twenty. Oh, I don't like. Yeah, I don't want. I don't like Gene Elliott though. That's probably why I didn't use it. Um, like you said, she tends tends to ride forward. And I don't think it's a really good match for a closer like that. Yeah, I'm interested to see where this is going to have this this ten because I, I used to throughout the year I'm used to seeing Cano put speed into his horses on dirt and then come back second off the claim and then kind of run a little bit more off pace. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see where where this is going to have this ten. If he's sitting him out wide, I don't love that. Yeah, I mean he's probably going to be back, right? Sitting in the back. Yeah, I, I think I don't think Canal wants him more than more than mid pack back. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think he needs to be in you know fourteen links back. But I mean, I think the ten figures it's just not a great price, and uh, I don't know that he's a heck of a lot better than the seven. Um, and then, like you said, we'll see with my eight if it's a uh, sticky form or. Uh, He's got any run left in him at age eight here. Um, yeah, and the six, I mean, to me, that just looks like a trifecta horse, but. I don't know. Tyler Connor, he's really only been winning with the, like I said, the juiced up JT horses and, and the more talented horses. So we'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see what he does. I don't recall him getting too many of these lower level horses home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we looked at his stats, they were just kind of like right on par. Yeah, Not his agents do a nice job, though. He's getting all those Jonathan Thomas. Uh, yeah, definitely. Kevin Giles has given the uh, six another try. And uh, here we go with that. Exact a key box three over one, two, six, seven, ten. All right. Bro, well, Kevin's in here. Kevin Phillips alive. We got. Kevin Giles giving the pick three or uh, giving the six another try. You got Kevin Strom on the screen. Man. There you go. Kevin's are wild tonight. There you go. All right. Pick three time. Miss the pick five, miss the pick four. I think I'm going to play a double here. There you go. I like that. All right. Let's look at the race four for our uh, talk about the track flow. So this is race four is a sprint. So. Yeah. So I'm going to. I'm going to end up tossing the three and the four now. This is the important part about watching these races. Is yeah. You need to be able to make adjustments. So before I was mostly through the three and the four because I thought I was going to be playing the speed. But the first two races we've seen tonight, it's been a little bit more off pace friendly. And, you know, that eight won the last race. But I think he, that was just a case of him being much the best. Agreed. So I'm going to kind of pivot here. And uh, I think you could still play fair on the four because she might, she might rate a little bit, but I don't know about that one. But I do like the five much more now in uh, in race number four. Wow. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I had the same thought. It's just this is where I think it gets it gets tough, right? It's like how much better are the three and four on paper than the five? But I agree. I, I definitely don't want to invest in the three and the four with that same running style. I might do the opposite and stay on the three just because, oh, shoot, he is more speed, isn't he? His, his one – there's a lot of synthetic race he came off it a little bit, but other than that, he's he has more speed. Yeah, ever since that ever since the claim, he's been just a speedball. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you get around the three, four, what about the eleven? So we got this Rebelli. Yeah, the I mean the eleven's the most logical horse, but it's gonna be so short. Right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh with using it. But if you're gonna use it, I would single it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to play. I'm going to play seven. 
with four or five double. That's on the play. All right. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to look at this horses of the double for a second. Let's see who can close. Look at those closing stats. The Brist stats do a nice job with those late pace numbers. I like those. Kind of get a good feel to isolate like who can really close. And they say that the Ravelli is <laughs> the best closer. Hmm. Well, what's the double into the Ravelli? That's got to be really light, huh? Let's see. Hold it up here. Yeah. Yeah, it's five bucks with a ten, and it's seven bucks with a six. Wow. Somebody hammered that six, wow. six, eleven double. But I mean, like your seven. I mean, the seven, eleven double, thirty-six bucks. Yeah, that's fine. But I, Always I got open. The computer's gonna knock that down a little bit. That's true. Hmm. Let's see, Kevin Giles, what's your gents home track? River Downs and Turfway. Oh, so you're a little Kentucky guy, huh? Or maybe Cincinnati. Nice. I'm uh I'm 20 minutes away from 25 minutes away from Saratoga. So I'm upstate New York. Yeah, and I'm 10 minutes. Churchill's right out that window, about 10 minutes. Nice and easy to watch Derby Works and all that good stuff. So yeah, it definitely helps to be near near track. Get out there once in a while. John, remember your odds go down because you're telling a million, million people. Well, John, it's very flattering, but I highly doubt a million people are turning into a tuning into a Wednesday night yeah. YouTube stream of turf. Life. But we, you know, if if you want to tell a million people to come watch the stream, feel free. We appreciate it. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, I think right now it shows that we've got about sixty people watching right now, which is pretty cool. We're excited to have everybody watching, chatting with us, playing Turfway, and uh, also I should say, remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you get alerts when. Uh, we uh, come on. Uh, Ty says 11 people. No, that's uh, Facebook. We are on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, it our little software there combines both. So. Um, all right. I'm still trying to see if I can, uh, if, any, if, I, if there's anybody I want against that 11. Um, I mean, he's pretty logical. This is a classic case of me getting too cute with this seven. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it too cute? What about, uh, did you look at this eight can, uh, yogurt? You like yogurt? with can, Yeah, yogurt's kind of lost form. I bet him a couple years in a row here at Turfway. Yeah. Never got the job done for me. Um, so I've kind of soured on him a little bit. But he he's does, a nice little price if you're interested. I mean, he does look off, off form. It's like you would have think you would have thought he could have done something there last time. But there's not really any closer in there. So that's why I'm just thinking, well, you know, a seven six double. You're right. The computers are going to knock it down. I'm sorry, seven eleven double. Still, it's paying thirty five. Even if they knock it down to twenty eight, or it might be worse than that. But I'll take that. Um, so based on this, it looks like that that eleven is going to be even money. Yeah. Which is, it's really tough to play. A favorite into an even money like that. I mean, you're getting yeah. five bucks up to ten. No, right, right. So the ten, you either just like skip the ten, eleven, and just you know. But I could take my eight into the eleven. That's fifty eight yeah. bucks. You know, yeah, so just sure. go seven, eight with eleven, or you know, do you just play the pick three and maybe you, uh, you know, maybe you wait it with the uh, ten one more time or something like that. Yeah. I, the uh, other the other issue is getting the uh, five out of the next leg, right? So as long as you don't go like 10, 11, 5, I mean, that's going to pay $10. Yeah, no, that's tough. So, all right, one minute. So we're getting down to final time here. But I'm going to – that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a pick three. I'm going to go down to a single of the 11. I was on 3, 4, 11 in the next race, but um, – the way the track's playing, I don't really want to do that. Uh, 
Um, hmm, might be some super effective plays here. Yeah, good luck. I'm a terrible vertical player, so I'm that's all you. To, I've been, I'm trying to teach you. <laughs> I'll never be good at it. Don't so know, never, you, never, you never. Like supers and tries and exact is out there. Good on you. I'll, I'm no good at picking second and third place horses. All right, well, we're running out of time here, but basically you just want to like close her and I don't know. Can this three close? The two and no, three? he's going to sit just off the leaders. I mean, those are, those are decent prices, and if you can get um, – I'm going to go 7, 8, 10 over 6, 7, 8, 10. They're loading the last horse. I know. I know. I'm punching. I'm punching as fast as I can. I'm going to key the 2, 3 – as prices um you know and if the one doesn't uh is out of the exact i think it could pay well so i don't know all right good luck everybody i'm just going to turn that video off so uh we're getting in trouble on yeah. permissions yeah so all right what Phoenix do we got kind of blowing the turn a little bit he wants to be forward but he didn't commit so the one got out there Fairly unchallenged, but here comes some. Now, now he's challenging on the turn. This is a classic Julio Felix ride right here. So it's a little faster. They're under 24 seconds for the first quarter. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens. I mean, one looks okay. I don't think he looks great. He's moving Another along. Connor's on the rail. What's that? The six on the rail. Yeah, two's on the rail. FDLC sitting wide. Ten's already moving. Six is four moving. wide in the turn. It's never when it turns out well. All right, so forty-eight seven. He slowed it down a little bit. Seven's already coming though. Major Sparks has got some major run. Yeah, the six hit a lot of ground though. FDLC went pretty wide. The six probably outcloses him. Oh, this is my super. I got seven six over one two. Oh, six has got more run, huh? Yep. But the uh that ten's coming. He is. Ten is coming on the six. So it's gonna be close. He hung. He hung. Oh crap. All right. Good call on the six though. Yeah, would we get there eight to one? Uh, I have five, I see five. Five, okay. I'm looking at different different spots. Yeah, should have used them. I was uh it's a nice ride. He hung on the rail and then uh mm -hmm. he didn't move too early. FDLC moved early and then that was it. Yeah. So we were right about one thing, the one uh disappointed. Well, he only went off at four to one. Thought he was going to go off a little bit lower than that. He faded pretty strong. Look how that went one fourteen and change. Yeah. So the closer is definitely. Uh, definitely a more fair run right now than last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good point about. You know, Tyler Connor got on the rail, and I mean, really, six, seven, ten were somewhat similar, but probably gave them the best ride of the three, right? Yeah, no, it saved all the ground. That was the difference. Uh, I don't, I didn't see the ten, but I got to think that Pesquiza was parked out wide with him. Yeah, the ten was probably best, but Tyler Connor gave a more, yeah, a better ride. He didn't. Comedic timing. Very nice. All right. Let's see if anybody in the chat got this. There you go. So Ty is saying we do a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we got to get some winners. We're going to do a better job. Um, but, you know, 
I think turf waste, I mean, you kind of said it, this is like the epitome of, you know, really hitting something 10% of the time and being wrong 90% of the time. So, uh, yeah. Hey, I mean, this pick five started out with, a, or the pick four started out with a five to one, five to one. So it's on track to pay pretty well right now. Yeah. So the pick three, yeah, this is looking really good. So the 50 cent pick three is paying $210 into the six horse yeah so, somebody hit that double eight which one into the 11. oh yeah yeah the six went off second choice in the double wow yeah it really did creamed it yeah, it was pretty flat after the 10. Mm -hmm. yeah the the odds board is kind of funny right it's like Two to one on the ten, then we got four to one, five to one, five to one, five to one. But in the double, yeah, you're right. The six was a pretty strong second choice. I think it's all the people listening to you jumped on it. <laughs> so, um, did you like anything in, in the late that kind of stood out? Uh, no. There's a. There's a Brad Cox in race six that I think if you beat that, it'll really open it up. It's going to be tough. I always feel like these mile and a quarter races are just kind of counterfeit, you know? Yeah, they more often than not end up getting one on the front end. Yeah, at a lot of tracks. Yeah, Turfway included on the front end. Um, this horse did run on the front end once. But, uh, yeah, wow, that, yeah, that horse is going to get smashed. A lot of a lot of turf horses. There's not a lot of synthetic form in race six. No, I guess a few of them. Yeah, I mean, I'd be almost interested in the Cherie Devoe horse, the four in race six. Um, just uh, with something that can get out there on the front, you know. Yeah. Although the six is a ghost zapper and uh, they are pretty strong. 22% synthetic routes. Love me ghost zapper. I think that's the best, it's the best synth sire out there. Yeah. For the low, so, low price of $100,000. Yeah. And Brad Cox probably knows that. So uh, this horse could be pretty well intended. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the weight was a little chalky. So not my cup of tea. Okay. All right, we're finally official here. Super $33. Pick three, 210. Mike Vitello. We're talking about the doubles probables, not the will pays. Yeah. It's some okay payouts. I mean, it wasn't the biggest field in the world. That's fine. I mean, the pick three is nice. If you're cooking in the pick five, that pick three, yeah, four hundred eighteen bucks for a dollar. It's nice. Yeah, you're in business if you're cooking. All right, so let's see what this eleven opens up at. It's gonna be even money. Can I offer you four to five? Well, if one to two. <laughs> Get none. There you go. Good name. That's a tough one. Any pick six players out there? We've got Maybe. some pick six tickets. I can't, you know, I, like you said, I, it's hard to hit here. I, I have enough trouble hitting four or five, so I definitely try to not play, you know, six too often. Yeah. Uh, although uh, Sammy, we know he hit that pick six, uh, scooped it a couple weeks ago for sixty-three grand, which was amazing. After the tax, man. Yeah. Sixer says is the pick six Mando. No, not no, always is mandatory no. foam. Not unless you roll. That's how you roll. But, um, yeah. I mean, I'll. I mean, I'll play it for fun in, at some tracks, but uh, I'll generally usually only play carryovers or mandos in the pick six. John says, "I don't have the racing form. I'm going to use the one two eleven first timers and maybe key and nine as a backup." All right.
So, uh, all right. So here's our replay. And uh, yeah, first five horses go out. And uh, look how far back the 10 is. Yeah. Connor just goes right to, he just gives him a patient ride. And then, yeah, that 10 was much the best. Look, I mean, look at how far back he is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what well, we even said. It, like, that's not, you don't want to win that race from no. 10 links back. Yeah. Kendall's not going to be happy with that, right? <laughs> yeah i mean and then the seven he kind of moved too soon right like look yeah, at the seven why, he sits four wide in the turn the entire turn like but like look at now why is the seven moving now like this is time to go now the six starts to go a little bit i think because the he had an opening yeah and then the seven ended up having to go wide maybe, maybe around the eight who's already four wide so he's like five wide in the turn it's crazy yeah Yeah, and so the six is just sitting here patient on the rail the entire time while the seven ten are just going wide. Well, seven's wide and ten. That really ten is still wide. really hasn't fired yet. Yeah. How wide the skizza is. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean at this point the six hasn't really even been asked. So yeah, I mean six splits never really has to tip out, gets the opening, and gets first round of the ten. Right. It's a good ride. Oh uh, yeah. For sure. Well, 10 was rolling by right here. Just yeah. Flattened. Well, I just think the six had never even really been asked. I mean, I, I don't think the six even, I don't think he even got to the bottom of the six just because he got such a great trip. I mean, he only ran for an eighth of a mile. So, all right, one to two. So, uh, can you offer anything to maybe beat this thing? Yeah, I like, uh, I'm going to stick with the four or five. All right. Up in arms, beach kitten. Yeah, I wish I wish yogurt was a little more tasty, but uh <laughs> yeah, me too. Maybe I wouldn't uh maybe I'd lose some more weight if yogurt was tasty. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, there, there's not really any closers in here. Do, do, do. Yeah. What about this nine? Five at Grinder. Ghost Storm and Girl. I mean, right. the, the best closer is the 11, so you're kind of out of luck. Well, that's what, I mean, I'll take an exacta, though. Like, I guess my point is, like, what else? Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, Yar Maurice on this seven. We were giving her kudos before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That form's a little rough. <laughs> Very rough. I mean, I'm thinking maybe the 12. All right, now I gotta, like I said, go into some of the. Uh, I think a, a shard on the ten could be a sneaky closer. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Sneaky closers. I think ten's your ten's your super key if you want it. Yeah, because I mean, look, most people are gonna play. If you're gonna play the eleven, they're gonna look at that the three and the four next. So um, if they get out of there a little bit, could open it up. Yeah, I mean, 11 is just the best closer by far. Um, yeah, here you on the 10. Okay. I think the 10 can close. Wide run. Widest run, mild, least, mild improvement in the stretch. Not bad. I wish the 10 was dropped in class. But yeah, that's what I was looking for. I was like, can't be choosers. I'm not familiar with Rowena Beck, the trainer. It says 0 for 6. Is that last year? I'm familiar with Alex Ashard being lazy and tipping 15 wide. Yeah. There's a couple closes with the 9. I don't know if uh, Matilda, if that's her thing, but I, I think she's a pretty useful, you know, bug jock. Yeah, you have to go back to that Hawthorne form. And that was on good good turf. So I don't know. If you if you trust Matilda, pull for 28. 
Yeah, I don't think she's really had that good amounts. I mean, we saw it in Indiana, like she can ride a little, ride a little bit. Yeah. Not not great, but not terrible. Uh, I was thinking, like, if you look at the Hawthorne race, three races back, I can think that race could get second here. Or four, three, four, five races back. I guess the question is the horse off form. Or... Yeah. I mean, it's back with this guy, right? Brian Cook. I claimed it right back. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's back with him. He missed, missed the horse. Um, yeah. All right. I'm, I can use a nine at that price at 18 to one. Yeah, can't do the eight, seven. I mean, at least sometimes in a race like this, you can throw a lot out. Um, what about the six? Man, they're just bad. These are not good horses, but. Yeah, I'm all set with that one. You said you're all set with that one? Yeah, I'm all set with Miranda on any horses. Yeah. Yeah, and you're five. I think that, that makes sense. Yeah, the German Terraza, he's done all right as an apprentice. Yeah, he's been fine. Um, hmm. Okay. Sometimes you got to dig deep here, right? Hey, all I know is if you get around this 11, you're, uh, you're cooking. Ty, is, uh, Ty has 3, 10, 11, so if he gets that 3 or 10... It's cooking pretty good. Beautiful. Love it. 3, 10, 11. That would be uh, solid. Yeah, Ryan's got to pick six in. Okay. All right. Kevin says 12 kind of sneaky with uh, that Victor LeBum on that one. Yep, my Tommy Lee. Pretty dirty form. Yeah, I think the form's pretty dirty on the 12. Does I don't know. It doesn't really look like it loves synthetic though. That five is an interesting price at eleven to one. Yeah, I mean he's solid fourth in the will pace, so he'll come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe like. Eight, eight to one. Yeah. But if the 11 stays hammered, maybe he won't come down. Yeah, I mean, this is where, like, I'm going to try a Superfecta and just key the 11 on top, and that won't pay great if, like, the 3, 4, 5 finish it out. But let's just say – um you know, if only one of the three and four is in the super, and then you, I mean, essentially you need two bones, right? So if you get a 20, a two 20 to ones in the super, I think it still pays okay. Plus, it's just, you know, you don't, you don't need to go as deep when you've got a single yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're, if we're being realistic here, this 11 probably wins 70% of the races in this race. Yeah. Maybe 65. So four to two, I mean, four to five, one to two, we're kind of in the neighborhood, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's probably fair value. But as just as a gambler, I don't like taking big favorites like this, so I'll always try to beat him. Yeah. It just opens so much in the horizontal pools if you kick out a horse like this. Because 98% yeah. of people are going to be using this horse. So if it loses, then you just open that entire sequence up for yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, are you looking at a pick three or a double into the main race? I don't know. I'm, it's tough with that maiden race in the fifth because I know there's so many unknowns. Like that Fernando de la Cruz horse in the very last race last week came from like last on that five at forty to one. That <laughs> prime. The the, so, the mattress Mac horse. Yeah. So you, yeah. you just you just don't know. It's it's tough with these maiden races. Like we talked about earlier in the show. It's just you almost have to naturally be wide. Mm -hmm. If you can if you can toss some great. But you just there's so much unknown that you're naturally gonna be wider yeah. in these baby races. So right.
I might do a try this race. All right, there we go. I like it. What do you got? I'm going to put the 11 in second. Okay. Nine, ten, twelve. Let's see. All right, twelve is a decent price. Five, nine, ten, twelve. Um, yeah, I think I think there's still some decent prices with that nine and ten. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get them in the super. Maybe I'm fishing a little bit, but. Yeah, I'm going to go 4, 5, 10 in first, 11 in second, and then 4, 5, 9, 10 in third. So it's $4.50. All right. I like it. That's my try. 10. 4, 5, 10 with 11 with 4, 5, 9, 10. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the more I'm liking it, I like your 5 in the sense that um, if the 3, 4 go at each other, I think the 5 is clearly the second best closer. Um. But the, my problem with the five is he's not really a closer. He's more of a grinder. He's yeah. a mid-pack grinder who just kind of stays on better than the other horses. I'm just talking about, yeah, the stats, though. I'm looking at, like, the Briss LP stats and gotcha. some of the different stats. Yeah, no, he's a grinder. and Yeah, I see what you're saying. He might. But in this race, I mean, he might be the furthest back. Could be a bunched-up group. Um, hmm. Yeah, and the six you're saying no thanks with uh, Rogelio Miranda. Yeah. Rogelio. Mm, he looks sneaky. I gotta use him. Mm. And why do you like the four better than the three? Uh, the four, I, I'm not I'm not convinced that Farrington a full send. I think she sits off the three. Being outside, you know, the way she ran that last race is she she broke fine. She did her classic, moved up and dueled on a hot pace and almost lasted. This yeah. three is, is faster than she is, so I think right. she has to let the three go. Yeah. The way this track's playing, I'd like something to come from off of it. Yeah, that's fair. I see what you're saying. So she just – yeah, that makes sense. So I think it's a case of the three either wires or is out the back. Yeah, no, completely, completely agree. And I, at this point, I would just rather fade the three. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a super that is basically the 11-5 exacta. And then I'm going to spread in the third spot. Um, Three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So basically, try to just pick the third spot up, and then on the fourth spot, I'm going to use the six, nine, and ten, so the bomb closers, uh, okay. all three bomb closers, and because it's essentially an exact, so it's essentially keyed on top, it gets really cheap to do, and then um, I'll put the five in third because I feel like the five is going to run second or third. So. Let me show, see if I can pull my screen up and show what I'm doing here. Can you see that at all? Yep. So, like, if I want to do a $2 super, that's 30 bucks. I don't know. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost a lot. So, a dollar super would be 15 bucks. And then you can do things like a lot of these wager tools you can switch. So, if I want to, switch the bombs and put them in third. So I'm basically kind of doing an all in one spot, if you will. And then, uh, you know, if I thought the race was really wide open, I don't think it's quite this wide open. I could do that. So then it's like 11 wins and then five has to run first or second. Um, you know, and then sometimes what I'll do is if I think that's less likely, I'll do that for 50 cents. So, uh, or another thing, like if this is my main play, I can punch this for a dollar and then say, well, what if the bombs run second? I'm sorry, run third. All right, I'll just do that for 50 cents. So have it less, you know, and have it more in a stronger opinion. Um, 
but you know, it's just like anything. If you can get narrow and you can be right, then then that can pay well. Nice. So anyway, that's a little bit. Right. I punched my tries. We'll see. All right. Good luck. So I, I did another one. I did eleven and second, and I did eleven and third. I don't have the eleven to win. All right. That's a good strategy. I should probably flip mine because it would be very painful if the 11 runs second. And who do you have beaten the 11? The 4-5? Four, 4-5-10. Five? Four, five, 4-5-10 four, five, and then 4-5-9-10 uh, yeah. and then 11. Yeah, this 10's not bad. I mean... Yeah, I'm coming around to it more than I look at it. The Alex Ashard, you're not a fan, but Hot jockey last seven days says Briss three for eleven. Hey, congrats to Alex. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if the ten gets second, this will blow up. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add that as well, because uh, so if you go eleven ten, so you, you chalk on top at a twenty six to one in second. You then, like I said, you just need one more price, and, and you're, you're cooking pretty good. All right. All right, see what chat's saying. Pick three, Kevin says. Nice. Good luck. I'd like to tell it. Oh, that's a yeah, big spread in the next. Race five, number 11, looks like she has a real shot. Your thoughts? That's the uh, Pavel Luan horse, right? Yeah, no, it's a great first run. Uh, past mm -hmm. horses. I mean, the way tonight's going, it has the kind of perfect run style. Uh, that was your your top choices were 9-11, right? For the track right now? Yeah, I like 9-11. Yeah, that, I was the same. 9-11 I mean, were my top choices, race five. You know, getting Lasix, I see that Powell's 10 or 3 for 10, first time Lasix, pretty good. to get leading rider Luana. Yeah, nothing wrong with that 11. I like it. I think he can beat the 5, which is why I use 9-11. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, let's see, it, if can, let's see if we can get this try home first. All right. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could get some value in the pick three if you go tight with just the nine eleven, but uh, I guess the challenge is race six and and all that chalk. Yeah, you got to get around that that Brad Cox horse. Yeah, it's looking a little tough to do. All right, I got my supers in, so nice. You're not punching as they load. Are they loading here? Two minutes. We got. We no, got. not yet. You're good. You're ahead of schedule. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you remember this uh this two in race six? The Sarah Hess horse that wanted a bomb. Oh right. Yeah. It's a pretty big downline close though. All right, so I got Two. Yeah, I mean three and uh three and seven look like pretty bombs in race six if you wanted to use your pick three. But I don't know if we beat that that ghost ever cox there. All right, here we go. Get ready. ready. I expect I expect the three to jump out the lead here. Okay. Ah. Ryan says unless Axel drops his whip again, classic. A little showboating action causes the loser race. Yeah, that that was not good. The uh... Yeah. The first time dropped whip. Yeah. Actually. Not good. All right. Jump on the 12. I take that off. Mike's, Mike likes your eight. He says eight may hit the board, second off layoff. Got some dirty form on that eight. 
Yeah, I gave up on the yogurt. It wasn't tasty enough. Ah, it was organic. Exactly. And then what's the double? I, I, I guess the double is not paying anything to the uh, the 11 to the 11, right? Yeah, using the 11 and doubles is tough. I wouldn't do that. 11, 11, 20 bucks, 11, 9, 26. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Well, okay. How about the 10 and the 5 for a couple bucks? And then I could do that to the pick three. Um, Loading up here. All right, good luck, everybody. Yeah, good luck. See if we can uh, get some winners here. Where are we going to end up at here? One to two? Even money? Even money. Until the until the last drop, right? Yeah, until it goes three to five. <sighs> All right. Oof, 12 took a bad step out the gate. No, there you're right. There goes the three. Four is not going. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know if that's full send three. I don't know if Farron broke poorly. Yeah, I don't think the three had to send too hard. Two to one, so the three came down quite a wow, bit. Wow, got smoked. Yeah. So other, the computer saw it as lone speed. Yeah, let's see how this track plays. Got to be like t low 22s here. Wow, 23. That's slow. Advantage to the three, right? There's 11 and even money coming through, but. It's always tough when nobody challenges these low yeah. speeds in, in sprints. Right. Yeah, nice no, work in the 11. I mean, he's got some time, but 47. Wow, three's going, going. Yeah, three just ran him off the feet. Fair and too late. Yeah, way too late. No, well, coming a little bit. Maybe not too late. There we go. Yeah, on the there board. You there you go. Do you get how? Do you, you get your try? Hmm? No, I didn't use the three in the try. Yeah. Baron did it, everybody. Baron Peters. Yeah, first one in the meet. Good call. I mean, she. She took the four back and just like you thought, yeah, set I mean, up the three and that's right. She was much further back than I expected her to be, but it worked out. That three got so short in the end. The yeah. short got so bad. Yeah. Had nothing. That's on, that's all on uh FDLC. He should have won that race. Yep. You gotta ration that horse better, man. He opened up way too early on the turn. Yeah. He's I mean, he's having he's a tough meet. Even with the winner earlier, he's. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess he's not. He, I guess he's won a little bit lately. He had, yeah, he's getting uh, better. He had he's a tough first couple of weeks. Four three. All right. Well, even money is nowhere. The two second choices. Well, isn't that something? So we were talking about the three and four, at, both at five to one, and the three just got pounded. Yeah, it got smoked. The computers hit that low speed. Yeah. The, uh, the 12 ran really well after a bad start. Took a bad step right yeah. to break. Well, there's a super I think it's going to pay really well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like we were talking earlier, everybody, uh, Gerardo Corrales is just lost right now. That guy doesn't know. He doesn't know how to ride right now. So I love him, uh, but he's not he's not it right now. So you can make money fading him. Yeah, it's not riding well. Huh. Wonder what's up. I guess like any athlete, when things start going bad, it's just uh, it's just time to get off for a little bit. Don't want to ride a cold streak. All right. Well, good call there on the four. Good adjustment. Toss the three, but not toss the four. Hey, no, the three was uh. I wish I would have played the exacta, the three four. Yeah, I wonder what but the game is full of. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, you don't wish. Twenty six dollars on the three. Oh, well, four three was wow. Four three was forty forty three dollars. So much better exacta. The three did get smoked. But 
yeah, congrats to Farron Peterson getting on the board. Was uh, no, it's just one before. What was I think we were yeah, looking at and after a third of the meet, third of the meet, yeah, yeah, two for 26 going into today, but uh, positive impact in sprints. She was only one of 11 in sprints, but that one was probably a bomb, so and probably a lot of bombs. So it's just getting some better mounts. All right, do you have the graphic of the uh, my picks earlier? I do. Pop that up. Pop that up. All right, so we got the eight in race two. Yep. We got the six in race three. We got the four in race four. So we're alive to all those horses in the pick four, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Good stuff, Kevin. Very nice. The uh, yeah, so the six that was great, and then uh, yeah, that eight was the uh, that was the jury first timer. Cool. Yeah. All right, so this should be this should give you some good pick fours, especially with that yeah. kind of spread. I mean, they were all five to one, so five to one into five to one into five to one. So we'll see yeah. what's going on. Well, especially I think with that last, right? I think that what we're going to see is the five is going to have a pretty low payout. Yeah, for sure. Nine and eleven will be in the middle, but. Like that seven, you're gonna have a nice, nice well paid to the seven. Cool. So then, yeah. So like you're saying on the right, so you used bees and three legs, but you've only used one, uh, one of the bees so far. Yeah, because it means that the way that I, that you structure it is, I have to be right one time with my A's, and being right right there with Farron as an A. Yeah. Works out. That's it. Boom. All right. I think you're going to be happy with these will pays. Hope so. Yeah. They're looking pretty good. All right, so take that down for a second. Here, I'll just pop mine up. All right, so pick four, 150,000 in the pool. And uh, all right, so your A's are 5-9-11 or no? No, just 9-11 for the A's. Okay, Nine, so your strongest opinions... Paying about basically the same, about eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. So we pay. Uh, we play the A's in this sequence right here. The way. So I have the A's for a dollar, and I have my B's for fifty cents. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So that gets you twenty two hundred on these. And then what were your B's? Uh, five, seven, ten, thirteen. So five, you're just trying to like get your money back and a little something that seven. Yeah. That's really nice. Thirty seven hundred. Ten. Very nice. And then the thirteen. That'll play too. So cool. All right. So we got some some something to root for here. Good stuff. Nice chat. What do we got going on? We got tickets in the chat. We got live. Who's uh who's cooking with what? Let's see what we got. Sixer says, oh boy. All right. Here you go. You got people rooting you on. Kevin says, good luck on that ticket. Kevin says, "Good luck to Kevin." Oh, thank you. Um, Kevin. So, uh, Aaron got bumped hard. Huh? I have to watch that replay. Yeah, I'll pull that up in a second. Nice, Ryan Jay's got the pick six going. Started with Farron there. Good job. Cool. Wow, singles, singles, Rusty Arnold. I love it, Ryan. Does Rusty yeah. Arnold point to Turfway Park? Rusty. Love to see it. Yeah, so if the four got bumped, that makes sense. But uh, I like that she was patient, right? She sat at the back here. Yeah, she didn't, kind of she the didn't same, panic. Same trip as the six, you know, different different race, but um, kind of sat on the inside, didn't try to make it all up right away. Like, See, like here, the 11's on panic mode, right? The yeah, it's like, all gonna, out right here. Like yeah, just, I'm going to all out, catch this three, and 
She's just going to let the three come back to her. Yeah, she didn't panic. She stayed tight to the rail, and that ground save was the difference. Yeah. Look at that. She's trying to get the horse straight. Yeah, the horse was uh, was tough there, top of the stretch. Yeah, too. even right there. huh? She stayed stayed strong here, rode it out. Yeah. Well, I think she, she conserved horse. She had a lot of horse left. Look at her. Look at Part of the neck. Man. Love to see it. It's a good ride. Yeah. Really nice. All right, cool. And then we got a pick five pool cooking too. Nice. D Trizzle alive in the pick three. Let's go, D Trizzle. All right. Pick three to the five, nine, 11. 80 bucks, 165, and $140. Good stuff. Nice. cool yeah it seemed like the nine i mean wow the nines eight to one here so why is the five six the five will come down so this is yeah, yeah five will go off favorite so to everybody out there in in video land this is a classic uh computer play right here yeah. they're distributing money to other horses to make people think the five is going to go off longer than it is. This five is going to go off as the favorite. So you can tell by, by will pace, um, yeah. much, much shorter in the will pace, the favorite clear favorite. Um, and if you look at early probables, uh, it's the leader in early probables as well. Right. I mean, it's almost like, like look at the two at five to one. It's almost like, you know, are they baiting money on the two? Yeah, I mean, that? they're betting Cherie. She's a name. You know, Abel's been winning with her a pretty good clip. Uh, it's tough. I mean, this is a this is a very tough race. Yeah, you can make a cake for almost a case for almost all these horses. Did you look at this Cassie horse much? I mean, I didn't. Yeah. Um, it'll probably like going to synthetic. Uh, Mark's just kind of average doing Lasix first time. I cannot stand Declan Carroll. I I do not like him as a jockey. I don't like him up at Woodbine. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very weak in a stretch. Uh, this horse has never done – the only sprinting he's done has been on dirt. So, I don't know. Take that what you will. If you like him, you know, he's 17 to 1. Use him. But I don't uh, – in a race where I was already too wide, I had to make some cuts, and I cut the 8. Yeah. Now, dollar pick 3 with 2, 9, 10, 11. Nice. Colby Hernandez is my favorite jockey. Oof. What do you think about Colby Hernandez getting kicked off of Just Might and then Just Might winning? It's tough <laughs> look for Colby. Yeah, Colby's, uh, I'd say, a little bit in and out, but I know you're not a fan. And not. Let's see if that video. All right. So, well, race of 12 here. You want to do something vertical again? This is just, uh, this is tough. tough I, race I, team, yeah, man. I tend to like to do that when you have an angle. This is just like, you know throw it up in the air with all these maidens. Um, now, if you've got something that can close, like I, I tend to try to play verticals with like closers underneath. Cause usually you're going to get a nice price and, uh, and, and they're somewhat predictable, but uh, you know, yeah. Like this seven, you were talking about the seven is a long shot that you've got at 13 to one. The problem with a horse like that is if it runs well, it might win, you know, Whereas I'd rather take a, a closer that's not going to win and put it in third in the try and fourth in the super, that sort of thing. Um, so would you recommend not playing vertically in these in these races that have a lot of first-time starters? I wouldn't play deeper than an exacta here. Okay. Yeah, for me. Uh, yeah, and the only reason to even do that, like 
So let's say if you you know if you really love this five nine eleven, you could do an exacta box of those three. It's not a lot of value there. I wouldn't really recommend that so much, but um, you know you, you could gamble. It's a lot more gambling. Like if you really like the nine eleven, you could put them on top in a try. The problem with that is like anything can run third in here with these first timers. You just don't know. Mm-hmm. So what do you uh, what do you make of Mike Maker not putting Lasix on this one? Because John in the chat is betting the one. Yeah. Uh, but it's odd to see big name trainers not use Lasix when they can. So yeah. this one is not getting Lasix, even though it's eligible as being a three year old. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, as far as the first timer with the oh, the one, the three, and the six are all running off Lasix. You got to think that's that yeah. gives the other horses an edge, right? Because for me, right, the only time you ever see non Lasix is in stakes company. So they either have big plans for these horses, right? Which I tend to not think so because they're starting them so late in the year. Right. To me, no. these are still two year olds, right? These are just glorified yeah. two year olds. Right. They're three year olds like three days, right? So. If they thought these horses had talent, wouldn't they have debuted them earlier in the year? Yes. Now, I know it takes a while for some horses to mature, and everybody has a different growth rate. But I don't really see – I'm not picking up too much confidence from these trainers who right. start these horses without Lasix. No, I hear you. I, I wasn't really interested in any of those three. Um So Kevin was uh, – Kevin uh, says, what do you think about Colby's right on Doncho – which was, did you see this? This was a firster that sort of uh, on the fairgrounds pick six day, uh, sort of blitzed the field at 25 to one. Yeah, he was the nine, right? Yeah, and blew up the thing. But I would say, well, I, I would say well, the question is, what, what about, you know, Don Show's ride and did it really matter who was on him at that point? Um, yeah, hey, Colby probably just had to get the horse in the clear and was able to do that. So, yeah, no, I, right. He did something he, and he didn't do anything wrong. But, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, was, I'll let you. Kevin, I'll let you reserve judgment uh, until we see Colby in against horses of a similar class and to see if he can work a trip that way. There you go. Yeah, and that goes back to what I was saying about uh, – I'm not saying he's an inexperienced rider, but it takes less experience for these riders to go to the front uh, in a sprint. You know, that's sort of the easiest thing for – you know, like if, if, if you take some of these um, – even these low weight, appre- you know, early apprentices, they don't have a lot of experience. If you think they have the fastest horse, uh, it's not a slam dunk to get them out of the gate and get to the front. But it, if they do, you know, that's an easier ride from there. Um, I don't want to say like anyone can do it. Yeah, I mean, he still has to ration it. He still has to get it to break. He has to get it in position, yeah. get it to change leads and all that stuff. Yeah. So, he, I mean, he did his job. But other than that, it's just kind of like him doing his job. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Ben says he heard this Astron first time starter is live. Well, I don't know who he heard that from. Right. I don't even know who the Astron is. This three. Okay. It was one, one of the ones we were looking at. The Owen Hardy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at him when we were just talking about it, but. Um, triple bug boy. Yeah. That's the one problem is the triple bug. Um, Second lifetime mount. So did you look at the female of uh, the the dam storm lily? No. On the three it does have. Wait, am I looking at the right one? No, I'm sorry. The siblings on the three. No, I didn't look at the siblings. It's got um, time form has it as a uh, one of the siblings has run a 118 over synthetic. Although that was a synthetic route and it ran the same number on dirt. Anyway, so there's a little bit of affinity in the family. Um, you worth uh, is it worth 14 to 1 to you? I think it's fair. I mean, it's not a terrible price, but uh, I, I'm not at about it in this field. I'm not really excited about the first or just because I, th- I think the five, uh, not in this order, but uh, for me, it's like the nine, 11, and five are, are pretty solid. Um, what do you think of the first time charters report? Does it give off an edge in this kind of race? It does because what the first time starter report tends to do, the algorithm is comparing the horses that have run against the horses that haven't run, which is, that's the hard part, right? That's hard to do. Um, so for example, the Tom Drury horse that won in race two, it had as a four star out of five. 
on the scale. I probably should have mentioned that at the time. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into that rating. So it has uh, four stars here on the one and the 10. And uh, let's see what else we got. The 12 is scratched. Okay. The 13 has a four star as well. It has the two at three stars. The three at two stars. And this the six as a one star. It has no five star horses in this race. And that to me, what that says is as it was comparing the firsters against the ones that could run, they just didn't really measure up, right? They're not quite there. It doesn't mean that they can't win. Um, here, I'll just pull it up. It's probably easier. Um, you know, like in the, in the top of the first time a report, we've got like those stats on like how they've done and show that there. So here's some of the horses, but let me go back to the top for context. So this is live through the other day. Uh, five stars win 21.6% of the time. Four stars win 13%. And then you kind of go down from there. So that's pretty consistent. That tends to hold over time. Um, where it is really helpful, like we saw, the eight horse is uh, the impact from the morning line. So five stars tend to come down 30% from the morning line. So those are big moves. Like we saw in that eight, he was a four star, but what was he, eight to one morning line that went off at nine to two? Uh, I think it was 10 to one. It was 10 to one. Okay. Yeah. So that was a big move, right? So those are the kind of moves if you can get in front of it in the certainly the double, but even more so the pick three, four or five, where it's sort of in a blind leg, you get a nice advantage. Um, all right. So if we jump ahead back to the race, let's see if I blew it up too much here. Um, okay. So there's crazy stacks. It's a four star. Um little bit of data on some barn workouts that look good. Um, but, you know, Maker, he's kind of middle of the road. All this red, though, tells me that at Turfway, he's over bet. So he's winning 12% of the time, but they're paying essentially at minus 31% impact. So um, this one's not even get bet at all. So that's just not, not super positive. Um Rusty Arnold horse with the 10. He he's a four star. You know, he's got some fast work. So I thought this horse is definitely have some things to look at. Uh he's 0 for 10 at Turfway, but we've talked about before on the show that uh, you know, the purses are growing by a lot at Turfway. So some of these Kentucky trainers that didn't really focus on Turfway are gonna be focusing more and more. Okay. Um and then just kind of going through some of these the 12 scratch, the 13. I was a four star for Tom Amos. Same thing. He he has no first time stars at Turfway on record. So um, I imagine over time he's gonna work that in his routine. The Sheree DeVoe, um, I did like her background a little bit. Two for 14, 14% at Turfway with you know some nice uh, ROI numbers or I mean impact numbers. Um, the De Visadero uh, is doing well so far as a sire. Uh, first time out, you know, 25%, super, super small sample of eight, eight runners. There's Owen Hardy. Um, you know, his horses tend to get bet a lot. I think they just come from, you know, he gets these well-bred Godolphin type horses a lot of times, and he doesn't get the number one string from Godolphin. Yeah. Um, they're not slow terrible horses but i think they tend to be over bet um you know so he's winning at nine percent but again like this is just negative impact um, yeah and if you remember earlier in the meet uh hardy has had some really good work uh horses yeah for these first time starters and they just haven't they haven't run well yeah. um so this horse looks a little like kind of a tier below those other work horses so we'll see uh we'll see how it runs but i'm not I think it would run worse than the other, you know, horses that were maybe more well meant uh, as late season two year olds. So I don't know. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of nuances to these to these first time starters. And if you think you have an edge or you think you have some kind of information, then take advantage of it, use it because any kind of edge you get is you know that yeah. much more of a chance you have at success. Yeah. 
So, all right, five minutes. Um, yeah, we, okay, so now here's the five coming down, seven to two. But, I mean, based on the doubles, where do you think the five ends at? Uh, I think the five ends up no more than two to one. Yeah, I think Bobby said uh, five to two he's projected. At. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably right. 11's coming down a little bit more than the nine. Let's see. Burson says, damn, the two has two winners from two starters, so two for two. Very good. For I think by means ROI, when Cedillo rides for Sherry. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been riding well for her lately. Yeah. Uh, there was one clown ride that he gave when I needed him. Uh, he was amongst the best closing, and he didn't get there in time. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to fault you. I love Cherie. Throughout the year, I'll bet her on turf and on dirt through the rest of uh, the rest of the other tracks in the country. Um, so I won't fault anybody for using the two here, for sure. Like I said, I, I it was a wide race for me. I decided to cut some. I thought the two would be bet, and it is. Uh, so I wanted a, a different price instead of this two. Yeah. So I opted, I, my price was – I opted for was a seven. I like the works in the seven. Um, consistent works in the last work. December 28th, uh, fired a really nice gate drill going 48 flat pretty much. Um, Very nice. So I like to see that kind of progression in these young horses. Uh, it ran pretty poorly in its first start. They gave it some time off, and I like to see the the progressive works uh, culminating with a, a really nice effort. So we'll see. You know, it's 15 to 1. This case hasn't been great. Kelsey Danner has been horrific so far during the meet, um, but at that price, it's worth an include to me. Yeah. This nine being seven to one is interesting. Yeah, so I was just looking at the exactas because we're we're talking about the seven. But so if you box the nine eleven and the exactas, um, the eleven nine is paying fifty seven, and the nine eleven is paying sixty six. Now those will probably come down, but that's not bad. And then what I was thinking is you could throw your seven in second. So like a nine seven exacta is two seventy, yeah. and eleven seven is one fifty. Nice. Um, what do you get with a uh, nine, nine eleven over the five? Nine five forty four dollars, not eleven five thirty two dollars. So not, I mean that's not horrendous. Like you, you get your, you know, double your money kind of thing if you're playing a few horses. I mean, I'm definitely fading the five out of the win. I'm just so confused because the five is laced in will pays, but it's not going to go off that short as a price. I think it will. I think it's going to come down close to two to one. Yeah, I think I think two to one's fine. I mean, you can accept two to one as a favor. That's fine. Yeah. It's these big fields. That's the best part about the big fields is the computers can't efficiently cover the prices, so it's great. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that. Like, I think if you just getting the five out of the win spot in the exacta uh, will be enough to pay. Nice. I'm just going to let the pick four ride. See what happens. Yeah, dude, you've got it. Got a good one there. Let's uh, get it home. And for those wondering out there in in um, in TV land, the as the money I put in towards the pick the pick four was one hundred twenty six dollars. Awesome. So it cost me one hundred twenty six to play that ticket with the structure that I wanted to play. I love it. That's that's super efficient. So I mean, those are those are you're you're looking at several eleven hundred to thirty three hundred dollar payouts. So yeah. So we'll see. I like it. So your top choices are you're looking at twenty two hundred on a hundred and twenty six dollar investment. That's yeah, that's great ROI. And I know not everybody can uh, can afford that that budget, and I understand that. Uh, but that's this is the way that I play. It's the way I play at Turf White. Um, when you get these big fields, I think it's it's worth increasing your budget if you have a good feel on the sequence. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's 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 not one of these internet Twitter tickets that cost thirty two hundred dollars. It's reasonable, and if you hit, <laughs> you know, if I hit. Um, you know, for, for two grand, all I have to do is hit one out of every 20 tickets and it pays for itself. So that's what I'm talking about. Right. When you lose 90%, but you hit 10%, the 10% has to cover that 90% of losses. So if right. you bet like that, and this which is the way that it works for me and it's successful for me, based on that structure, then this is a long-term way that I can I can play the races. Yeah, I love it. And uh, and you've been able to do that, which is impressive. Um, Let's see what happens here. I'm very curious to see how these first-timers run. Because, folks, this is the start of derby season. Yeah, I mean, the, to, to bring them out of turf way, that's sort of like a... Yeah, I know, but I'd love to see... I'd love to see... It's a not a last way. resort, but it's... Uh, It'd be sweet. 
Yeah. But, you know, if, if somebody runs big here, they could be a factor for the, the Jeff Ruby later in the year. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, in, in, I mean, that's part of owning horses is you can dream, right? And if they yeah. – So we'll see how many – if any of these first-time starters make a big impact, they haven't lost yet, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, and don't forget, like our friend Bobby says, uh, two fills was a turfway run the Jeff Ruby. That's how he got it. Yeah. So good luck to everybody. Whoever's alive, whoever's starting. Yeah. All right, Kevin. Lives here. Good luck. Let's bring your pick four home. Good. Mike Thompson says he's on the eleven. All right. Good luck. We're with you. Oh, threes oh. loose. Yeah. Not a bad job. Good job by the, the kid. That sounds like a really mature way to handle that loose horse right there. Yeah, did a good job. This is only his second to mount ever, so that's a really good job by him. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the jock? Yeah, he's, huh. he's the triple bug. The triple bug. So he should be, uh, should be proud of the way he handled that. Yeah. Backing them out. Oh, well, all of them? Oh, they scratching and then moving the gates? There might be a gate issue. Oh, man. The tra tractor guy got out. There must be an issue with the gate. They're going to get a new gate? Oh, gosh. That'll be... Uh... He might have broken the, the thing when he broke out. The, uh, the latch. The latch? The starting latch? Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, they're moving far from the gate. They're like, get the heck out of here. So this is this is kind of a computer's worst nightmare, right? They yeah. have all their money assigned already. They already punched, and oh, perfect. Sixer noticed it too. The late money hit the five, so the five was down to I think seven to five or eight to five right now. Yeah. Yeah, seven to five. Wow. Yeah, it didn't it didn't even seem right at, at three. Yep, there it is. Starting gate malfunction. They're announcing it. Yeah, Tony just announced it. Okay. So that means they're getting another starting gate, I presume. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lengthy uh, lengthy delay here. Yeah. So we wait. And then, you know, this is a good opportunity for everybody to revisit any pick fives they have because you can re-weight and reassign your dollar spreads based on the board right here because it's not going to change. The computers already have their money in. Uh, this is going to be the most accurate depiction of the odds. Yeah. Well, I didn't put my pick five in, so maybe I have an opportunity now. There you go. Now you can reallocate. Reallocate from uh, unallocated. All right. Pick five pulls huge, too, looking at 200K. Yeah, and that's just going to sit there and grow, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably going to get to 215 before they uh, even think about moving the gate. Oh, yeah. It's going to get it's going to get way up there. Well, the other thing about fading this five is the tracks plan, you know, kind of closing too. Yeah, plus, like we talked about many times, Corrales is just lost right now. Bobby Marks says there's some funkery. Yeah. Yeah. Always is here at Florence, Kentucky. Some fun, fun, uh, fun going on. Late money. All right. So, uh, all right, let's talk about race six. I mean, any way to get around this Cox thing? Yeah, I mean, if, if Axel makes the mistake of getting too aggressive, uh, mm -hmm. he has before. He thinks he's on much the best, tries to showboat a little bit. He might get a little lazy with the ride mm -hmm. and maybe be wide, maybe sit too far forward. And then this track, the way it's playing, I, I like the three a lot. Color crush. Hmm. Yeah, that was all mm -hmm. right. I mean, I roasted Timmy Gurdon earlier in the night saying that, you know, he's pretty cool. <sighs> But just the way Walt rode this, I think it was, was it last week, the week before, mm -hmm. on that speed bias. I mean, it's a really nice ride. I mean, obviously it comes up in in class here. But yeah. I like it. yeah, I'm just wondering about do I want to take something on the front end against it or uh, the back end? What about the Maker Ramos? Maker's been so cold. 
He's been he's been I've never seen him colder than he is here right now. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. He's uh I have two for fifty. Wow. It's not good. And he's he goes off as a short price a lot. Obviously yeah. not here, but they're going back to the paddock. Oh boy. There goes well, the game. You wanna hang or do you wanna sign off? Um no, let's let's hang out. All right, cool. Well, if anybody has any more thoughts about uh, this race or the rest of the late pick five, let us know. That pool's going to, yeah, 195. I mean, that's going to only jump from here. Six to five. <laughs> the problem with these with these closers is that nobody's really uplining consistently. Right. I mean, the three is, but you never know what the barn change. We have a lot of maiden graduates in this race. Yeah. Like that that five had to really grind up to get there. I don't know if you watched the last race. Mm. Oh, wow. I like that upline, though. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I'm more on a turf running style, but I'm... I mean, I'm all in on that. Yeah, so if you're if you're in on that kind of stuff, the three, the five, and the seven all have that similar. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, on the opposite end, you have the two, who was a significant downline, but just maintained momentum and, and swept around. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to play that five, but, you know, it's just, like I said, these distances, it's just like a lot of times stuff's one on the front end. Um, let's see. The eight do anything? The canoe? Mm. I don't think so. Yeah. This, this Brad doesn't really have much early speed, so he's probably sitting mid pack. Right. Yeah, that's why I just get worried that these races just get walked, you know, on the front end. So you got the one and the four. If one of them doesn't go, does it? Uh, does it just start to get really slow? Yeah, I could I could see Abel going, but Ramos gets aggressive too. I don't know. I don't know. These are uh... In my experience, Brad Cox wins these races more often than not, unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm interested in the one off of like, especially this race two back and three back. Um, I mean, not that they were, they were great races, but just kind of being on the front, hanging around. The factor mm-hmm. runs well in synthetic, so... Uh, Slight delay. That's not really specific, but they gotta go get the Jeff Ruby gate. I mean, really, yeah, they, they, that's what they're doing, right? So they're, um, at a minimum, they need the tractor to take that gate, get it completely off the track. If they have a second tractor, they can move a second gate in at the same time. If they don't, they've got to unhook that tractor, take it to the other gate. And then pull it in. So that, yeah. Classic, classic turfway. That's why they got him back in the paddock. So I'm on race seven right now. All right. I'm jumping there with you. All right. What do we got, yeah. race seven? I think, I think Abel gets too aggressive on this six. All right. Okay. And I like to I like to seven eight. So Abel goes out. The one goes out. I mean, I think Abel gives a right a game last time. Rushed up, um, and I mean that was the speed bias on the rail, and it just couldn't he couldn't hang up. Yeah. So I think he gets a little overconfident. And I think he rushes up. I mean, the horse is his best on paper. Um. I mean, I think the five can hang with them, so that's going to be a challenge. The five and then the – I don't know what to make of the Lobo. The one? 
Yeah, but I, I really like the seven eight. It was eight out. Oh, yeah. 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 What do you think? You saw the Burgos jockey impact. I'm in the single seven. Really? All right. Yeah. Let me look at him here soon. And if, if if Brad beats me, Brad beats me. Well, Klopp, yeah. We saw, we've seen Klopp win in Indiana all summer long. Yeah. First Samurai's definitely good on synthetic. Those bolted Oros are great. What about the three? He's just too far out of this. Yeah, he's too weak. Um, yeah, I'm in the seven. Seven looks good. Um, wow, well, I think they're gonna they're gonna bet the six like crazy there, aren't they? Yeah, this is gonna take a lot of money, and he could very well win. But I'm, um, you know, I'm the same thing I did in the early, uh, the early tonight. You know, I'm fading the heavy chalk. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's where the opportunity is. What, um, you know, like the two at all? Mm, the two, the two is interesting. Uh, off a voided claim, but still back in for a tag. I don't really ever mm -hmm. like that. I mean, maybe they get a little tad too aggressive. The downline close. I don't love to see that either. Um, I think the seven covers the two. Mm -hmm. Especially, uh, what's the price on that two? Isn't it short? Yeah, it's two to one. It's a favorite. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm good there. I, I like that seven a lot. Yeah, the two looks like it didn't beat the toughest bunch there. Oh, baby. Race eight. All right. Moving on. Get ourselves a, a short price cock scalp. There we go. That's the stuff I love to see. We got another big cock's favorite in the eighth. Yeah. This time you get FDLC up. Oh, we got a lot of speed. Sir. Big contentious race. Now, this is the kind of race that could really come from off it. Um, I didn't update it, but when I looked at the first, like, six weeks of the meet, mm -hmm. the mile race was producing a lot bigger prices than the mile in the 16th. Nice. For what it's worth. You know, I don't know if they just have to get aggressive going into the turn or or what, you know, what the reasoning. Oh, man, I love this race. All right, so we got a lot of speed. Two's going out, five to two big favorite. And it's Brad, you know, it'll take money. Oh, for sure. Uncle Mo should be fine. Goes from 21% on dirt to 18% synthetic, so no issues there. The bolt, the eleven, the bolt to Oro that jumps up on synthetic from seven percent to fourteen percent. Yeah, it's our boy Nick Ruiz, Mister yep. Good Spotter too. I think it's Martin Garcia's only mount for the evening too. Hmm. So, yeah, why is uh, De La Cruz up for Cox and this Axel riding something else? 
I don't know, but he he's yeah, usually I, his uh, indie guy. Axel's on the twelve for Cano. All right, Gates been swapped out. We're good. We're good. Oh, all right. There we go. I got this four. The Lobo? Yeah, look at that turf race. Oh, yeah. That would be dynamite here. I mean, just the that middle turf uh, turfway race last year is perfect. Yeah, exactly. And that's a huge use. Huge use. And I'm against the five, too. So I'm against the top two favorites in there. Love that. All right. What else we got coming off? I need another closer here. That four looks great. What about the oh, seven? I mean, yeah, about the seven. I'm also going to use the nine. Yeah, probably worth it. Union regs, though. But so I don't think you need the eleven. Uh, yeah, I'm using the eleven. Yeah. I mean, at first glance, it's fake California fix. But if you go back to when it was with Hartman, it's run plenty fine on the turf. Okay. I'd use them as a B. Yeah. And I think you can use the 12, too. We saw Cano off the first off the claim with that 10 with the Skizza a couple races ago. Sitting yeah. Last and almost make it. So I think he's a use that plan at the price. I really like this race. I'm going to go wide in it. Yeah, that's a nice race. I mean, that's that can go in a lot of directions. There you get opportunity. What about the eight? I'm going to use the three as well. Uh, no, the eight's part of the pace for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, the, I don't. I think they're going to be in tough spots. The uh, the favorites in there is. I mean, the four looks great, though. Yeah, I, I really like it. All right, I'm moving on to the ninth because I, I, I'd focused on the early. I didn't focus on the late. So yeah, I'm skipping through right now too. I like, I'm kind of piecing together a ticket. All right. I mean, the track gave us a nice delay. Might as well, right? Absolutely. So, uh, PDT says, damn, HRN got the Synth Lord as a guest host. Yeah. Love to see it. Yeah, they're still in the pack. I mean, jocks are off. All right. We got time. We got a Wesley Ward first timer in the ninth. I know that's your favorite. What's the level? It is Maiden 15K. Ah. Rich Averill Racing is the owner. Does it look slow? It does not look fast. Nice. Love to see that. A couple jockey changes. Looks like Walt is on the 8, and it looks like Morales is on the 13. In that race? Yep. All right. I don't think that, thir that 8 really matters. And I don't think the 13 really matters either. Oh, and he's got Corrales up. Woof. You're kidding me. This horse is, that horse is coming around. Remember that horse ran against our horse? Yep. Yep. Another Kelsey Danner. Ooh, this is a rough field here. Sharp faltered. I'm out. What's crazy is that some of these are running back from earlier yeah. in the meet. They didn't run a step, so there's easy tosses. Right. Like this, but this 12 was <coughs> with the bias, get some class drop. Boy, just finished out the back. 
And I don't think the speed's going to hang on here very well. Yeah. We already saw a cheap maiden race come from off. Well, still on the path. Oh, the riders are up. Okay, so we're, we're moving. We're getting there. Did you see this nine? I mean, I don't like them, but it's just interesting how uh, – Started straight maidens at Ellis, then he went to a maiden turf sprint at Indy and ran a pretty good race for 80% of the race. Yeah, he's not bad. I mean, he'll, he'll appreciate the cutback. I definitely think he wants a sprint. Right. The question is, where is he on the pace? He's getting blinkers, so I got to think that LeBron's going to send him. Yeah. The 11 looks like it's got speed. Oh, I like that. You're kidding me. Yeah, I, th I think the horse had trouble last time. I think it was set to. I mean, I just I like those spin your wheels run lines, and then they get a class break. I like that yeah. a lot. And I like the Correa horse too. Which one's that? The five. And now they got to warm the horses back up. Yep. Yeah, I'll, you know what I like is this 13. If we're, if we're looking for closers, that horse can really close. Just don't know. So the, war, the one and two scraps, so the ward is on the rail now. Mm-hmm. I thought the seven was interesting there. Yeah. Claimed and then they're moving up the ladder off Billy Morey. This kid rides well with the trainer, though. Mm hmm. So, what do you do with the ward toss? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think your kitten me looks. Good there. I don't I think know. I'm the more six. I get your nine, the more I the more I kind of like the nine. Yeah, I think I'm six, one seven, race. thirteen with nine. Okay. One race it did turf sprinting, it did well. All right. Let's see how much time how much time we got. A minute? Yeah, probably. It looks like there's walking to the game. I won't make the pick five. I'll let this ride, and then I'll play a pick four. Yeah, you should. I mean, with you got a nice ticket going, so I, I'm I have have to start over. So I'm gonna try to get one in here if I can. Who is your next pick after the five nine eleven? Here, would you say? Uh, I like the seven. It was that work. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, I like the 11 too. 11 looks good. All right, we found them going back in the gate. All right, I was able to get something in here.
Well, I forgot I was looking at exactus and stuff before, but. All right, Kevin, good luck. Good, yeah, uh, nice. good luck, everybody seven. out there. Good luck, everyone. Let's get your uh, seven as one of the prices or some of the, the 911. Yeah, that would be your top I think, choice. Uh, Ryan in the pick six single the 10 here. So let's get the 10. All right. Yeah, then you both win. Oh, Rusty Arnold. Rusty. Well, rusty for the win. Team breaks well. Oh, Mojica, I wanted you coming off there. Oh, the five is a steady fade to back here. Five's in last. Nine's in an okay spot, but he's kind of chasing. I mean, the yeah. seven's almost in a better this spot. Relaxed. Where's the 11? Thirteen looks all right. Nobody's really coming to him. I think your sevens in this. I mean, we'll he, see. Ten seven look good right now. Yeah. Gonna have to hold off his four. Yeah. Come on, seven, get through there. Rusty Arnold, baby. Rusty for the win. Let's see. No one else is coming. Oh, fourth comes. Four, yeah. Come on, seven, fight. There you go, go, seven. seven. Get up here, baby. Come on. All right. I'm liking it. All right, folks. Good there job, go. Kevin. So that was for 50 cents. So we got uh, 3,700 right there. Beauty. Love it. Nice. Very nice. That was a nice ride. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, he stayed on the rail. Was who was that? It's nice work. I mean, that's the trip. Just oh, Bishiza. Just kind of sitting in that, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth spot on the rail. Like that's your trip, right? We've yeah. seen that win three, three of the races so far. Nice. Almost got that ten. Yeah. Almost got that ten. But we'll take the seven. Yeah, good job there. That was uh, that was really nice. So here, let me put your ticket back up. Just to... so there was a pick five originally, and then when you did hit the 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 first leg, you started a pick four there, right? Yeah. So we played back to pick four. Uh, we we missed on the pick five. Uh, Walt was closing really well on that one. If that one gets up, we win a lot of money right there in that race. Um, yeah. So them the breaks. Yeah, that, so, that just missed. You're right. Yeah. So we play back to pick four. Uh, $126. It cost to play the pick four right there. And we just got back a little over 3700 Beauty. Love it. Good work. So if anybody played the ticket, congrats. You hit with me. If not, hey, hopefully you <laughs> learned something tonight. If not. Look at yeah, this. Look no. at these prices. These, this try is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. The super is going to be insane. It's probably gonna carry. The super's gonna carry. Yeah, so with the the five, nine, eleven, none of them ran, right? I mean the five and eleven never like ran a stop. Yeah. Um yeah, that was a nice call on the seven. I mean, like you said, you had a really good workout coming into this. Um Kelsey Danner hasn't had a great meet so far, but obviously can win and can win with prices. Yeah, and Colby almost got there. Yeah, that was nice. Cool. Well, I used it to, to kick off the pick five, so I um, got that moving. Nice. Um, but that's that's a beauty. Um, yeah, I mean, anytime you turn $120 into 3000 and change, that'll work. Almost 4000 And then that pick five, wow, look at that. So the pick five to the seven, 29 grand. Oh. And you basically lost that photo by what this much in that yeah. first for and they, and they were both the same price, right? Yeah, the, the they were both five to one pretty much. Yeah. Oh, that stinks. Oh well. Well, I hope everybody 
Hope everybody had some fun tonight. I did. Thanks, yeah. for, uh, thanks for having me, Mark. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I'll have to do it again sometime. Loved having you. Thanks for uh, joining us. Everybody, uh, thanks for watching and playing along. Hope everybody got some winners. Keep them coming. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so uh, you get uh, notifications anytime we're doing some live streams. So uh, keep on winning. And uh, Kevin, we'll keep it going. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Have fun, guys. Have a good night.